Uh, okay, okay. Go on. Uh, yeah, we're on. Miles, hey. Uh, woo. Yes, go on. <laughs> Talk about being uh, fashionably late here. We're a few... What do you... What do you... You seem so relaxed. What are you doing, man? You got a... What are you flipping through? You know the I can't read that. The, the appropriate catalog. The appropriate... Uh, you know, what you, that's how we roll. What, uh... uh yeah. No, I, uh, I got a new goodie in the mail, so we'll talk about it later. But, uh, yeah, uh, we have another episode. Episode number 40... 46. Uh, 46, yeah, yeah. The number after 45. All right. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Episode it, number forty six, uh, and yeah, um, it's been a minute. You it, know? it has uh, been. Uh, the last time we had spoken on the episode here, uh, you you know, you we were taking a, an extra week away uh, to knock out a few things. Uh, I think I think you got back from New Mexico just a little bit early, but uh, I mean, yeah. not enough time to to get another show. So we hugely beneficial, though. I uh, I feel pretty good. How how are you feeling, man? Not too bad. Just uh, getting back into the groove of things, having uh, some time to myself, catch up on some projects. That's about it. Uh, honestly, man, it's good to see you again. Um, you yeah. know, we've got a lot going on with the show. Um, <laughs> and just like, you know, those moments when you try to take a little bit for yourself and just we've got a lot compounding with the show at this time. So, a lot to catch up with, too. Yeah, yeah we got a lot to catch up with. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's dive right into it, man. Uh, what do we got going on? All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the Nissan Nerd Podcast. Of course, my name is Mike Delashman. The guy talking there is uh, Miles Hall. And uh, on this episode, uh, we're going to check out a 300ZX that's been swapped with an electric powertrain. Pretty cool uh, uh, article there. Uh, we're going to cover some recent drama surrounding a uh, bring a trailer auction for a 240SX. And then later, we're going to be talking about the 18th annual Z Days uh, event happening with the event organizers with us. Brian settles on the show, so please stick with us and uh, let's go for it. Before we say anything, Miles, I got to correct myself. It, it was the 19th annual Z Days. This year is the 19th annual Z Days. I want to okay. get that right. That's all right. No, you know, nobody's ever expecting perfection out of you. So I expect uh, perfection out of me. That's why. I, I know. And it must be frustrating. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we got a lot to catch up. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Mike. Uh, we are celebrating our second year anniversary. <sighs> You're right. I, I, you know, I had gotten a, a Facebook memory when we first launched the page, and I was like, "Wow, has it been two years already?" For one, and uh, dude, we've done a, a lot. Long, we've done a, a lot. Long, hard road. A long, hard road for sure. I mean, it's been fun. Uh, I remember exactly where I was when I launched when I when we launched the the Facebook page and started doing that promo work. We were still, God, you know, we thought we knew what we were doing. You know, <laughs> we, still, we still don't know what we're doing. We still don't know what we're doing. We got a better idea. We we got a better idea of not knowing what we're doing. So we know where we are. We're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But yeah, it's great. But. Anywho's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very cool, man. And you actually went above and beyond. Yes, take a look, man. That was a gift there, man. So yes, uh, we got. Uh, if you ever see us strolling around in a future uh, car show, Miles and I, or, we're gonna have some or golf cart, I'm golf like, cart, right? Some spiffy uh, new uh, polos with the Nissan Nerd Podcast uh, logo on them. And uh, mm. what? It's, <laughs> what? it's like right over the nipple. It's right over the. No. Nah. It's, <laughs> it's, we it's just conveniently it. placed. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh God! What? And it's you did it. You did it. <laughs> it's, 
damn it. Well, I should give a shout out to uh, our friends and fellow Nissan enthusiasts, Joseph and Ray. They were actually the persons I called on to, to make this happen, too. Fellow Nissan enthusiasts. Again, we when you find a common thread with something you just enjoy doing, and then you realize that your other friends actually have jobs that you can actually give them business and that's what exactly what we did so yeah and kudos to those guys for helping us out and you know joseph actually created our logo um, yes give him a shout out at his business that's uh um, gracky joe um he is in process of gracky checking joe. gracky joe so it's it's it has to do with uh um uh he he's of a polish descendants so that has to do something to do with uh, his heritage that makes it gracky joe so um and if you need any uh nissan related design work done he's actually an uh, extremely skilled artist i would never tell him this to his face <laughs> <laughs> no i no. he's done a, he's done a ton of things for us over the past not just nissan nerd related uh nismo fiesta when we used to do that stuff local yeah, club yeah. shirts uh you'd be surprised how much stuff he's designed and uh super hell of a uh, hell of a nice guy honestly um so yeah uh, <laughs> kudos to him and then ray right ray yeah he uh yeah. uh mr uh, ray rubio uh at alamo decals he went ahead and set us up with this uh embroidered digital pattern which we now own so we can put it on everything other t- you know, t-shirts he was talking about hats or whatever apparel we can do yeah. and i don't know Very i mean cool. we're we're ray learning that world uh, Ray's always been amazing too, as well. So kudos Good to guy. him, and uh, we will throw some links up for his information and later on here, so you guys can check out something if you need something done locally out of the San Antonio, Austin, Houston, Dallas yeah. area. He's your man. So great shout out, man. Um, before we keep going on here, uh, we've actually got a huge uh, amount of comments coming in uh, from uh, social media. For you guys that are joining us through the Facebook channel, thanks for commenting. And be sure to continue to comment as we're going through. Uh, we'll do a few shout-outs here as well. Uh, we've got uh, – let's check it out here. Let's go, Mr. Jeremy Stillwell. Oh, God. Go ahead, That's Orlando. What, first, first one to Orlando. Orlando. To co- now, <laughs> now we need two two patches. That's call, what he's saying. Called in the business. They're yeah. Called pasties. So <laughs> I'll tell you how I know this. Coming to the stage right here, we got Mike D doing it for you on the top side. He's gonna be shaking them double D's for you, gentlemen. Get your tricks <laughs> ready. All right, and your dollars crisp. Anyway, you, you, um, yeah. Uh, Jeremy kind of chimed in. He said, "Miles, is that a picture of Brian behind you?" Uh, no. That, that is, is another white guy. That, that's me, isn't it? That yeah, is that's... Mike Double D right there. Booyah, Kasha. That's it. And you can't see anything behind there, so don't even ask, Jeremy. I'm not going back there. <laughs> uh, not going into the bush. All right, moving on. <laughs> so, uh, But uh, kudos to everybody for uh, coming on and joining us today. Thank uh, you. Brian Locke as well. We just had him on the show. Um, Valkyrie needs some shirt. Yes, you do need some shirts. Um, hey. Patches, pasties. I mean, we're going all out. <laughs> we will take all this kind of stuff. Could that I, be a new thing? I, a Valkyrie pasty? No, no, no. Just like, just in like car shows in general. Like, like, hot, show your support with the new, you know, pasties for God's sake. Your, your car guys walking around shirtless and in car lots with, yeah, it'd be a sad, sad. I don't know. Sad thing. All right, moving on. Man, I am just, I am just dying. No fire. No. no. Fire. <laughs> just, oh. So. All right. Well, thanks again for everybody for being with us. As always, yes. the show would not be anything without you guys, and we really appreciate you being here. So thank you for that. Um, again, um, you know, we want to just kind of just drive right into it, and we've got a special guest coming on with us here today. Um, a frequent flyer, if you will. Um, Mike, go ahead. All right, all right. So uh, where are we at? All right, so um, – of course, he has been, uh, let's say, serving his 15th year as an event organizer for Z Days, an event. If you are within the Z community, you, you should know this event, especially on the East Coast. Uh, he's a good friend of ours, a uh, returning guest. He's actually our first returning guest uh, here and uh, all-around track junkie, man. We always talk track cars. Whenever I have a track question, this is the guy I go to. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome... Brian Settle, where you at? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Motley crew out there. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are y'all? 
Dang. Doing all right, man. You got the locks, man. What? When was the last haircut? Have you had one since we last uh, had you on the show? February 6, 2020. I got that February. salt and pepper look. You looking good. God, man. Don't go to prison. Don't go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're getting there with me, man. I just haven't yeah. – I don't let mine down anymore. So, yeah, kudos, brother. Oh, Looking man. good, as always. We haven't seen you in a in a hot minute, you know. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think uh, yeah. we saw you right before the last Z-Day show. Yeah, that's good. Um, so That's right. We're always – what are you drinking? Yes. The, what, what do you got Is with you? Is that a michelada? <laughs> just <laughs> nice. It's a Rita. Yeah, strawberry oh, Rita. Rita. That's hot. That's some nice what? stuff. While we're on the topic, Miles, uh, typically what we do at this point here is that we do uh, kind of give a salute. Do you have anything with you, Miles? What do you have? Yeah. Of course I yeah. Do. yeah. When you got Brian Settle on the show, you have to have a le- legitimate drink. What do you got? In- What's in the cup? What's in the cup, Miles? What's in the cup? Uh, yeah. This is Menchilada. For real? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's how well, it goes. I don't even explain. Look it up online. Google menchilada. So, menchilada. At right. enchilada, menchilada, <laughs> and you figure it out. It's pretty good. It's a man's drink. It makes yeah. the, it makes my like ten minutes from now, my yeah. mustache will curl up. Yeah. So. It's, it's... <laughs> I want to give a cool. compi. Go ahead, Mike, with that compi. Let's go for it again. As we normally do, uh, a salute to those in the Nissan family whom we wish whom we wish good health. And to those we may have lost along the way, let us be reminded of them often. Let's go ahead and give it a compi, guys. Woo! For you guys online as well, please join us. Drink what you got. <laughs> Knock it back. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we got to go into news. Brian, you were going to stay with us on and comment, and it better be gold. I mean, it better just be fire. Hot fire pouring <laughs> out of your mouth the entire time and just be nothing but solid good jokes. You so you're carrying the show tonight, all right? Day. You know what comes out of this pie hole. <laughs> 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 yeah. No filter. All right. Um, let's go right into news. Uh, Mike, you got the news. Um, I'll let you kind of have to take the first one, all right? Yes, I do. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and get started here then. Uh, the article I want to share for this week is actually a recent true story, and I swear it, it's got everything. It's got drama. It's got deceit. It's got a cry for justice, and it's got a 240SX. Yeah, I swear to God. It's got everything, and it's got a 240SX centered around all of it. So uh, bust out the popcorn. Uh, our friends at Jalopnik had a really good article on this and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and give you the details their article is an investigation the reason why bring a trailer pulled that 240SX auction and why it is very very complicated so uh, I I'm going to give you the cliff notes in general about this story so for those who really want to get into the details definitely check out our episode notes we'll leave it in the link but I re- what I really want to highlight about this story is how Nissan – I'm just going to say, dude, there are so many nerds, Nissan nerds and 240 nerds that banded together to call out flaws within this car. Uh, in general, what happened is that in this listing, the initial listing that was uh, brought onto the Bringer Trailer page calls this 240SX – a low miles, I'm talking, it says here, 590 miles on the odometer, 240SX. It's probably one of some of the lowest miles you'll ever see. Uh, and especially in a world today, the 240SX is the car that really introduced us to the drift tax, right? So to see one of these in some of its lowest, purest forms and some of the cleanest, what we think it, at this moment, one of the cleanest examples uh, it's really just a, 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 an incredible looking car, uh, but here's where it gets kind of shady. Uh, now, Bring a Trailer has a rigorous process. When you want to list your car, it isn't as simple as just paying a fee and listing your own photos. No, they actually have editors that vet you and make sure that you have the proper number of photos, uh, the proper uh, resolution, a uh, uh, descriptive uh, a detailed description of the car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, just they. This is what really makes bring a trailer. So, um, it's what makes bring a trailer bring a trailer. It's the details, right? <laughs> the, the excelled auction functions of it, or the the, the excelled brand. Anyway, go on. Yes, yes. <laughs> 
so this this 240 SX is being listed as having 590 miles, being in pristine condition. Uh, into uh, you start getting into the description, but it was very soon after that. The, of course, the viewers of these listings really kind of started to notice things about this car that just weren't adding up. And when I talk about an attention to detail, that's what these guys did. And it wasn't just generic things like, oh, this thing has rust or this thing has overspray. Uh, that was some of the things they mentioned. But when they talk about certain things about this car, I'm going to give you a few examples of what the uh, viewers of this listing called out. I'll give you a few examples. Non-factory welds uh, were uh, allegedly uh, seen uh, in the within uh, a set of these pictures. You start getting into uh, a foam insert missing in between the radiator and the center support. Uh, fender foam misalignment. Painted, overspray. Overspray. You got, rust, you got your weld on the lower core support. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Actually, the color... Actually, it's... One of the other callouts was not only the welds, but the color of the parts. You know, certain parts when they're manufactured in the original uh, chat part of the original chassis. You know, you have uh, it'll be painted the same color as the car, for example. That's just an idea. A lot of these people were calling out a certain particular uh, component of the part that were saying that's not original. Um, you're looking at they were calling out non OEM fasteners, uh, particularly on the vent plate. Um, and just a huge laundry list, and it was multiple people. This wasn't just one person. I'm talking multiple um, people on this site calling out these flaws, and, and it really takes an educated person uh, or 240 SX nerd. Again, this is why I like this article so much to to call these 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 guys out, and this is exactly what they did. This is what we're talking about here again, talking about the uh, uh, fender alignment being off. Uh, Undercoating, having uh, improper uh, undercoating. Uh, let's check here. Let me know if you see anything yeah. else, Miles or uh, oh, Brian. No, just well, somebody shot undercoating on the whole bottom of the damn thing. That's first off, and then I don't is this well, overspray on the exhaust on the tailpipe uh, exhaust pipe? Yeah, no, on the uh, on the tank and the, the lower body. It just doesn't. Oh yeah, come like that. I mean it's and yeah. It's like if it carries over all that way, then why is it not on the middle part of the body? You know what I mean? That it all looks like that. That's how the rest of the car should look. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, th this is something's not right here. But this is this is. The part that I enjoyed the most was just the attention to detail. By somebody who's online doing what we're doing right now, they're doing this, squinting at your screen, calling out certain things, which I, I enjoyed. But uh, as a sto from the story as a whole, uh, we learned a few things. Uh, one was that uh, uh, the owner had actually bid on his own auction. And it makes – they call it a shill bid, right? Shill? I think it's – uh, S H I L L. It, yeah, yeah. It, it makes in in many ways it makes the auction um, no longer valid in some cases. He's kind of you know betting against himself, and yeah, it, it, to raise the numbers. So it's not it's it's a deceitful practice. Uh, that was one thing that was being called out. Um, the other one was uh, the description initially did not mention any sort of damage to the car or rework done to the car. It wasn't until after. These nerds got together and pointed it out that Bring a Trailer then added an addendum to the description saying, oh, by the way, it had this, this rework done. Um, Jalopnik actually spoke with the owner of the car. Uh, it was uh, photos by Duncan Imports, and they're out of Virginia. Uh, again, this is where you start getting into details. I don't want to take up too much time, though. But essentially, uh, the owner of Duncan Imports was do doing what he could to justify himself and the reasons why he uh, <laughs> had his own bid. Yeah, and it gets it gets really it gets really muddy. Uh, and so, if you're really interested in this type of drama, you got to check out this article. Uh, it, it does. You know, he did admit that what he did was wrong. That is true. But what he was trying to do was to ultimately end the bid early. And what bring a trailer side had said is that what makes them uh what, what's very very important to bring a trailer is that once an auction goes live it never gets shut down uh, it's kind of like the roulette wheel you know once that once that ball's inside the roulette wheel all bets are done right you gotta you just gotta play the cards where they lie or you know let things happen the way they're gonna happen uh and again the 
that those bids is what is being claimed as um, uh, an attempt to remove the auction. In other words, though, but again, it gets really, really muddy. But it is very, very interesting. And uh, if you really want to check out more about this article, go ahead and check out our links, or you can go to Jalopnik and uh, check out this article, though. But um, yeah, other other than that, majority of the pictures. This is again clean interior, two forty SX. If I may, Mike, yeah. I've had a couple of beers with some of the guys from Bat, and they really do pride themselves on being transparent, good for the community, good for the buyer, good for the seller. Mm -hmm. And they admit they're not perfect. They do rely a lot on the the lister, but they won't tolerate stuff like this. I mean, one of my opening pages every day is Bat. <laughs> not <that I'm laughs> there but open up uh, open up chrome oh well that's that's another car i can't buy today which one bat b-a-t b-a-t right it's, it's one of my starting pages every day it, it's it's an amazing site though yes i mean i i've we've had a few friends do some auctions through there and of course uh, the articles that we see it, it's not the first time i've seen you know, bring a trailer. It is a very popular site. Whether you're just window shopping and just want to see clean examples of any car, that's where you want to go. You know, it kind of uh, it is kind of like window shopping, right? Just kind of take a look and uh, take a look there. Um, Jalopnik. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, bring a trailer did send a uh, a response. Uh, by the way, uh, again, I don't. I think we've kind of uh, gotten to a point though, but. It, they did say, and you mentioned it yourself, you mentioned transpar transparency, and that is one of the key words that they used in their response to this article. And they're right, they, they pride themselves on transparency and integrity of auction of their auction platform. So uh, I'm not saying nobody's right, I'm not saying nobody's wrong, but it is a very, very interesting story uh, to, to check out. And this literally just happened within the last two weeks this whole story so uh it may act, i know the auction has since been removed but the drama that became of it it, it could be still ongoing so uh, that's one of those um infamous not famous more than famous it's infamous <laughs> if you don't remember that he's infamous but yeah it, that's the problem with a car like that when you're yep. going to sell it it's like as the owner you're kind of like you're still trying to get that margin but you're just like cringing you're like oh do they know about all the drama and then eventually that owner is going to be like uh, yeah, you know that's the car oh damn yeah. it there's, so there's some kind of drama is going to continuation of that Sorry. There's been a couple infamous builds, Nissan cars on Jalopnik from a shop near the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. That seems to be, you know, seems to be a good place to read about dramatic Nissan cars. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, man. I wonder. Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, this isn't the first example. This isn't the first story involving a Nissan and bring a trailer then. So I think. No, not, no just Jalopnik, not bring a trailer. Oh, Jalopnik, not bring a trailer. I'm my mistake. Good, 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 good point. <laughs> um, so that's my article. Uh, I think, um, ho of course, everybody's trying to get better. Uh, bring a trailer, or you know, in general. So, uh, but it is to see. It is crazy to see these things here. By the way, I didn't share my title of the event. I call it here: Drama, Deceit, Money, Nerds. That's the call. <laughs> the title of this uh, article that I that I labeled here. So anyway. Uh, Miles, you've got an, you've got an, an article you wanted to share. Yeah. Um, next up on the news article, I've actually got something that I've, you know, it came up within the last few days, and it's just been kind of pinging around uh, Facebook and a bunch of other groups. But uh, Mike, give me the steering wheel on this one, and I was going to show you guys an interesting car that I had found. I mean, it's it's basically a car that you're familiar with, but. <laughs> The interior is what I kind of want to talk about a little bit about. So uh, this kind of came up recently on uh, one of the Facebook groups. I'll pull it from here, but it's it's getting pretty um, pretty popular amongst uh, other 300ZX Z32 fanatics. But we've got ourselves a Z32 that is all electric. Um, so this one uh, popped up here recently, and honestly, it was, uh, I guess this was spied or caught somehow filling up juice at a uh, lo local charging station. But yeah, they, they kind of went and then retrofitted the entire um, engine bay for what you kind of see here. And it, 
I will say that it is kind of a rather clean install. Um, you know, if you look at it, just a few little details, um, if you want to check it out, I mean, they have the nose panel to where it basically yeah. flips up. I like that. Scissor, and I thought that was pretty slick. I was like, man, because I mean, once you close the hood, you would never know anything and you just have it as a pop up. Um, so you basically kind of push it and it, it flips up and you can charge up. So I don't know. That's pretty darn sick to me. They maintain the power steering system, which, you know, it's probably one of the only things you're going to have left <laughs> this, this process besides the basic suspension. I mean, you're really just gutting it out and taking the guts and making that happen. Um, and, you know, this is actually the reason why I thought this was noteworthy and, uh, and I thought it was a, a rather cool article to kind of talk about was because you start going into the situation where you're taking cars, changing out the transplant. Is it sacrilege? Is it is it adapting to a modern world, you know, um, and if you start reading some of the articles, uh, some of the comments on these things, it gets a little yeah. heated. You know, you've got your your elitist or your loyalist um, for these cars and they just don't want any change. I mean, hell, if you change any microscopic thing on the car, much like you're bringing trailer nerds or your 40 <laughs> SX nerds or any other car nerds, people are going to notice people are going to catch it. But. It kind of comes down to, well, this is what I wanted to do with my car. Does it deserve the nod? And I kind of think so. I kind of, I, I know people are like kind of shrugging at it and, you know, Hey, I get to drive my 300 ZX now with no engine problems. whatsoever. <laughs> Which, uh, now, it's debatable. It's debatable. Yeah. I mean, the 30 is a great car, but you know, it does, these cars are getting old and then you have to kind of do a full commit to, to uh, getting these engines done the way you want to get them done. That's true. But you know, a complete power plane transplant, I'm not talking LS. I'm not talking about <laughs> I'm talking like, you know, something like this. To me, yeah. it's like you, you still get the power. You get a little bit of torque. You're not getting crazy numbers unless you truly go after something like the higher end Tesla motors. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I really think it's cool. The the Z32 is a, is a rather heavy vehicle. And to, to take that power plant and still adapt it, yeah, you're going to be fighting that. But it varies yeah. as much as a clean install. And you kind of think – and I've said this before, if you've listened to the show, where I really think that this isn't necessarily the future that's going to take over, but I really think that this is going to be a new modification that you're going to be seeing a lot of. It's very popular already for retroing cars um, to make them full electric these days. Um, and I, I feel like we're just on the cusp of – it always starts with people gutting out another car like your Teslas or your, um, your other powertrains out of somewhere. But – I really think the next step that you're going to see after this is people making kits. Basically, you're taking the heart, the, the motors or the drives from that, and then you're basically having these custom kits that are kind of a simple plug and play. But it kind of goes that back to is it sacrilege or is it kind of cool on its with its own merit? What do you say? Yeah. Here's my opinion. It's yours. Wash it as hard and as fast as you want to. <laughs> It's it's true. I mean, it's 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 like uh, right. It no one has to tell you what you can do if you've got the means to do it. If you've got the vision and the the, the means to do it, I mean, then why not? I mean, there's nobody else you have to impress except yourself, you know. And everybody's got a vision. I mean, we've all seen those cars that look tacky as hell. I mean, this is just on a as, from a cosmetic side. Nah, what? But. You know, but you ask the person, and they are absolutely in love. So, uh, with the car that they've built, uh, so I mean, it, it has to do with yeah, what's going on inside in, inside their own you know mind and what their intent is. Uh, for for me, thinking about this car, um, the fact, I overall I like it. Uh, you know what's funny is that of all the Nissans that I'm a fan of, the Z, let me just say. The Z32 300ZX, which we're looking at right now, that's the car that got me into this whole mess. So I have a, a certain fondness for this car. And I've also said to myself that I would never swap engines uh, at, into this car uh, or, or non-Nissan engines. Any type of engine swap would be a Nissan-related motor, right? However, when I see this, it's no longer about what brand are you being powered with. It's about the... Um, 
right, the thought that, hey, this is the future and this allows me to enjoy this car that I've loved for so much. It's given me an extension with this car. Uh, you know, we're, we're not at a point yet or at all where gasoline – well, gasoline's expensive right now. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> but uh, it, you know – Especially if this car is ongoing and is continues to be out there and enjoyed for decades to come, I mean, this is really someone who's been able to adapt their, their favorite car to a change in the times, you know. Extension of longevity. Okay, I, I could see that, you know, yeah. and uh, that's a pretty valid point. But yeah, I mean, it kind of comes up to it. I mean, look how much you're gutting out of that car, though. I mean, radiator systems, cooling system, completely gone. You know, um, from, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, well, you got the battery packs, you know. Um, oh, yeah, you, still got the, you still got the traditional battery rocking in the yeah. same spot that's going to ruin your uh, your little <laughs> that, that piece that always breaks. That, that, the good. cow, the, yeah, the cow yeah. louver. Yeah. You still have some Z32 uh, flavor that's still in there that's still going to give you the enough Z32 whoa that you're going to be like, yeah, I drive a 300ZX. Yeah, I break the – every time I rip out the battery, I break that little panel piece <laughs> and I have, to, I have to go find it for $145. But, yeah, I mean the point that uh, you kind of come back to, you still get the heart uh, – the design a lot of things that you might love about the car if you don't care how it's powered hey more uh, uh more power to you uh comments jeremy yes. stillwell it is a way to save a car that may never get a chance to be put back on the road that sounds like an excuse <laughs> but, no. but, I, but i will say though jeremy does have a valid point there i mean if you're and and I would say that if you can't get the parts, and we're talking maybe five, ten years from now, maybe there is not a lot of ready availability of stuff um, that's quality. And maybe you're just saying, hey, you know what? I can't find anybody work on this thing. Um, all the skilled guys that we would know, maybe you don't know that and say, this just seemed like a more solid, feasible option uh, for me at the time. It's valid. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a gearhead and electrical engineer. Yeah. Things like this really intrigue me. How do you put all those battery packs and cells into a, what is arguably a very compact engine bay? True. And do all that engineering and still make it fit and, oh, and oh, finish on this is phenomenal. I yeah. Mean, I was actually wondering about the drivability. I mean, we know about what weight comes when – storing uh, we're gonna, batteries we're gonna nerd and out we're gonna go yes what, what, what's the uh what's the weight distribution like i mean <laughs> is it still loading on the rears i mean it's is, true <laughs> that's exactly where i'm going i mean can you take this thing can you can you drive around some canyons in this thing or is this just mm -hmm. a uh yes, you know go to a, a saturday morning car show and kind of just leave it at that i i don't well, know i mean you know? if you go to the car show and you're just rocking it and it's just, it pop the hood pop the hood <laughs> I'm just saying that you do have a valid reason to pop your hood and like, I don't know. I think you would, you could definitely split a room with this topic, but the thing about it is the frequency of this topic is going to happen more and it's more going to increase and more. So, you know, these conversations are good. You know, two years from now, we could be like, man, can you believe electric versus hybrid? Or we're talking about something crazy like, you know, all wheel traction you know i mean people yeah. stealing whatever they're going to be stealing out of these arias and everything else is going to be hitting the streets here pretty soon pretty crazy stuff it, um ion last one uh what if the guts were a nissan electric setup like from a nissan edams well first yeah it's a, it's a good point if the technology and the cost hits the streets um then mm -hmm. great um otherwise um yeah i mean i mean technically you can steal anything right so yep. uh <laughs> What I was thinking of too was that uh, this is an entire industry that is growing right now. It's opening up in the market right now. Someone who can actually retrofit older cars with newer electric powertrains like that and to do it in a certain manner. What you got, Brian? So there's a company, several of them, but they take uh, the Tesla uh, socky boards and all that stuff and they replace them with something you can tune. And so oh. you can adapt. I mean, there when you say there's a whole sub industry, there are people who are scavenging entire Tesla battery packs, motors. I mean, yeah. it, it yeah. there's it's a huge thing and it's coming fast. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one that I just saw too is that there is a 
uh, same thing, uh, an, elect an electric motor power plant that was purposefully uh, shaped or uh, arranged into the shape of a uh, LS1. A to where um, it literally uh, yeah. looks like an LS1. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, the mounting on. the mounting points are similar. And it has, it's the same footprint uh, approximately. Well, and, that is and the cool. weight is almost there too as well because of the weight of these packs. I think it was still a reduction. But yeah, for the most part, it was very cool. I, I just like the way that they kind of did that. And they've done that on bikes too as well, on motorcycles as well. They're trying to <laughs> – <laughs> I can't think of the documentary right now, but there's a great electric bike documentary. I saw it on Prime years ago, and I want to say it was like Zapter or something catchy like that. But it was these guys running the Isle of Man um, on bikes. And this is probably dated now. It's like 10 years old. But they were taking the these power packs. I mean, they're they're pretty sizable. You know, they're rectangular in shape, and they're trying to build these frames and then ultimately race these bikes. At the time, Ooh. the technology hadn't been there, and they were fighting things like trying to get the big enough motors to to utilize these on their applications. But I mean, this was ten years ago, and now you have that that technology transitioning into them, transitioning to that. We know that it's coming in the uh, in the semi truck. Um, uh, that too industry too as well hell we've seen the designs it's just that it hasn't taken off just yet because uh for whatever reason you know whether it be an economical impact you know slow to transition you know oil companies um you know killing guys that make electric motors uh, in their sleep <laughs> i'm just saying that doesn't happen but uh, we talked about happen. that a lot yeah there was there was those don't stories you that you a, read don't, don't you make don't you dare make an engine that runs on water <laughs> <laughs> He slipped. He what slipped happened? He fell on an ice pick 19 times. He, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, lead poisoning, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> a, a bullet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of all about the money. And there was a, there was a great – somebody commented in there in that uh, piece, and, I, and that'll be the – we'll kind of let it go from there. But Okay. Um, they, they talked about, you know, originally Henry Ford was one of the biggest proprietors or the biggest, um, pushers of, of, of not utilizing the train because they had to push the transportation industry. And mm. so it became this big, just, um, uh, I'll just leave it as a big, a big drama point. A um, huge you know, influencer and, for his own personal gain, perhaps. Yeah, we'll call yeah. it that. But, you okay. know, and I think sometimes technology and innovation has to be helped along with the willingness of industry to accept it and and those powers that be to allow that to move to the next stage. So, I mean, this electric stuff has been around a long time. It's no, not new to anything. This stuff was being made in, in the late 80s. But... Mm -hmm. We're just getting around to it now. It's probably delayed. We probably could have been sitting high horse probably 15 years ago, but here we are now. So right. It's, 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 moving on. Uh, but yes. yeah, I just, again, thought it was a great car. I just wanted to kind of share it with all of you. And Mike, now you have news in 60 seconds. I'm going to hold you to it. That's cool. No, do it, man. Timey. I'm uh, I'm ready right. for this one here. Let's go. All right. So in news in 60 seconds, I have a pair of stories for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen on this one. First one up is that... Uh, uh, Nissan is involved with designing a next-generation lunar vehicle for NASA. Uh, this is, comes with a collaboration between Nissan, Teledyne Brown Engineering, and also Sierra Space. Um, Teledyne Brown Engineering has been around for over 70 years, providing uh, uh, space uh, hardware uh, equipment. Uh, they are, of course, this collaboration with Nissan. What Nissan brings to the table, according to this article here, is that they offer uh, deep knowledge into autonomous driving and intelligent vehicle systems as a cornerstone for safer, seamless, integrated technology that empowers the future of mobility. We all know the traffic that the moon has, so we need that autonomous driving to do it for us. <laughs> uh, but, but really, I mean, who knows, man? Maybe they'll have a nice little uh, Nissan logo on that uh, lunar vehicle. It's going to be on the moon, so that's kind of cool. I, you know, you say autonomous and you're talking traffic, but you don't see the real issue. <laughs> Uh, astronauts are drunks, um, <laughs> and, and that's really what it's about. You just don't know because they hide that from you. There's not we we went to the moon. That's not the conspiracy theory. The issue is you got nothing left to do up there but drink all day long, and that's what they do. A astronauts are just day drinkers. That's it. That's all they do, and they just need somebody to stay in between the lines. 
and then get get back to the spacecraft, go to sleep. That's it. As, as much as a horsepower junkie I am, if you're going to strap my petunias to something <laughs> with a bajillion foot pounds of thrust, I'm going to have a cocktail. Yeah. You might have a cocktail when you arrive. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Know, we'll in. <laughs> what I can't wait to see, especially you're mentioning drinking in the moon, the first instance of uh, streaking on the moon. Someone ho- can hold their breath long enough. To- <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably happened. <laughs> it's probably happened. Uh, and the aliens are like just sitting on the dark part of the moon. They're like, they're yeah, not ready yet. We got to get not a new- ready yet. They're not ready. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> we're not, not going to bring love and peace. And uh, they're not ready. All so, right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> Next story. Second um, story. You know, I, I, before uh-huh. we jump onto this, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. I know we went over okay. 60 seconds. Sure. But this isn't the first time Nissan's kind of stepped into the air, um, stepped into uh, a platform that's beyond them. Um, yeah. You know, what's crazy is there was there was a, a smaller aerospace program that Nissan had. We're talking 2002, 2003. This is right around when they were having a financial crisis. But a lot of people don't know that. Ghosn, uh, when he came on, was one of the first things, uh, one of the things that he cut in an effort to kind of save the company. But mm. this isn't new for Nissan. So I just want to kind of point that out. All right, moving on. Cool, cool, cool. Moving on, moving on. All right, second epi- second uh, article and last article for our uh, news in 60 seconds is that we want to let you know that the Nissan has delayed once again the launch of the Araya. Um, this was announced just on Monday, and the reasoning behind it was uh, having to do with the effects of the global chip shortage, as well as what they call other supply chain disruptions um, throughout throughout the way. They're saying that the chip shortage has passed its toughest times, but to allow the market to adjust because... Um, even though we've gotten over this hurdle, supposedly, the market is still reacting to it. So they're saying that this reaction that the market is having could take up to uh, another year, uh, weeks or years. Um, the original launch of the Araya was supposed to be in mid-2021. Uh, as of right now, uh, sales in March begin on the 22nd, uh, sorry, uh, May of 2022, Europe begins summer of 2022 and the u.s will begin sales in the fall of 2022 and then my speculation was that this might be another reason why the z is also kind of they haven't the z the new z has never been delayed because the launch was never given up per se Um. but yeah yeah okay thank you brian you had something yeah so i live in the global supply chain world for my real job yeah we're having trouble just getting a container to put stuff in to put on a boat. So you've got the challenges of finding a container that you can rent. Then you put your stuff in it. Then you got to find a boat to put it on. Mm -hmm. So our, our typical lifespan on a project is 12 to 24 months. Yeah. We've added 12 months delay. Everything we sell during the global supply chain We'll call it issues to be polite and keep this PG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's true, man. I um, I, I deal with. Oh, you want to hear something crazy? We're talking about materials and shortages, and and I think at its core, at least in this case, with the chip shortage, it has to do with the shortage of uh, wasn't it lithium or, or there's a certain elements that is a shortage. Uh, e- Yes, <laughs> equally so. I deal with construction and yeah, these these projects. Um, and right now, there is a huge spike in the demand for sorry, not a, a shortage in uh, stainless steel piping. And the reason why stainless steel piping has a shortage is because a, a certain element that's needed, which is nickel. Um, the two largest suppliers of the element nickel are Ukraine and Russia. And because both are in conflicting countries and nations right now, you, you can't the, – the price here in the U.S. has skyrocketed. So it's it's some crazy stuff. Like you said, this is crazy times right now. It, 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 is, it is ridiculous. Yet. It took me two years of COVID roller coaster and then you add World War III on top of it. <laughs> What's next? I mean, we, we keep, you know, oh, it's, it's almost over. It's almost. No, no. What's next? I mean, after this, I'm going to pick up chess because I think I can take on a grandmaster. 
in a car. Yeah. <laughs> like the gas, the gas shortages people. were fun. That was interesting because I just like people filling up water tankers full of gas. That was the best. Um, the the TP um, the TP Bonanza um, the uh, yeah that, that was the, uh, the, Royal, yeah. The, the the TP Royal Rumbles that were going down at the at the grocery stores. That was awesome. Um, I don't know, man. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, this chaos uh, over the last three years. It's just been uh, that's, fun. Uh, that's what that's what's great when you're an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we have a lot that's coming down, and I'm going to lead Mike on this one. Yeah, uh, we've got Super GT coming down the pipeline. Um, go ahead and give me damn steering wheels, go and uh, I'm going to uh, give you the dates. Um, Super GT is fast approaching. Uh, for those that do not know, the first race is coming up on the 16th and the 17th. First race of the season. That'll be at Okiyama, Okiyama International in Japan. Um, we will, of course, give you uh, links to those as they uh, go through um, the uh, go through the week. And then, of course, if we can get anything on the dub, we'll also throw that out on the, uh, the Facebook page. Um, definitely follow us so you can continue to check that out. A lot of good competition. Nissan bringing their a game i'm not going to go into a whole lot of details if you don't know that the gtr is now bumped down to the 300 and the z is now in the 500 class i just told you so yeah. we we have a lot that's coming down the pipeline as far as news and there's there's always that that preseason confidence and everybody's yeah okay, we're running strong we're looking good uh, you know yeah everybody um Everybody has a plan until they get hit, right? Punch but in the face, I, yeah. <laughs> everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. But uh, again, these are our dates. But the thing I also find uh, is really exciting right now is um, we're getting some feedback. And yeah, we get feedback from drivers all the time. But we're getting some really stellar feedback from drivers. But we're also seeing some great results for the new Z that's coming out. And um, Mike, give me that steering wheel again. And uh, I wanted to share uh, this article uh, so this actually came through uh, motorsports.com and it was talking about just recently in the last uh, few days uh, here nissan z hit the magic 300 kilometers per hour it's 186 for 186 186 4.4 4, uh, mm -hmm. miles per hour so, um, yeah, which is, which is a substantial increase from the GTRs. Um, you know, they were putting down probably, um, you know, in the, uh, just in the high twos, 291, 292 with the GTR previously. I think maybe the 293s is where they were on some of these back straights. But now they're, they're well getting into that. The only other car that's kind of um, showing them at this time is one of the Toyota, um, Toyota uh, cars that are coming out to play. Um, so yeah. they are riding the heels of Toyota this year. So right out of the gate, it's pretty evenly matched. Um, so this is not the first time we've seen this um, with the Super GT. This is with the Motul um, unit that came out. One of the drivers, um, uh, Quantarelli, kind of talked about some of it. And I did want to go ahead and mention something. He goes, there was four or five meters per second tailwinds. That's why it's hard to compare our car to a Honda and a Toyota. But Matsumura said, as far as I know, the Toyota rec recorded almost 300 kilometers per hour and Honda was about two kilometers less than that. So they are riding the pace. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I I was, uh, I, it's going to be pretty interesting how that first race or how the season is going to go on. Um, the other thing is, um, I don't have the article right here, but the, uh, the Calsonic Z as well has been doing pretty solid as well. So I'm pretty excited about everything that's coming down the line. I would highly recommend, um, getting your eyes, um, getting some free time and watching those, uh, um, watching the new uh, season as it unwraps here in the next week. So one week away next weekend. Next weekend. All right. That, that's exciting to see. I think this inaugural race, actual race with 
the uh, the new uh, Z is going to be very very exciting to see. Again, whether all this, how you said in the beginning, in the beginning, it, it, especially when it's during practice and whatnot, it's that that speculation. You know, we see some good numbers in the data, but right when it when when the rubber meets the road and you're actually cup racing, let's let's see how it does. I have high hopes, of course, but uh, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. um, Mike. Uh, you also have an update for Formula E, right? I do, I do. So uh, I'll share my screen on this as well. Uh, so for Formula E, since we last spoke about it, there has not been a race. Uh, actually, it's been about a six-week uh, gap in between uh, the, the, the previous rounds, round two and three, and then where we're at now. Uh, so rounds four and five are actually happening this weekend. Yes, so April 9th and 10th, uh, there is a double header in the streets of Rome. So we're back in Europe uh, racing with uh, Formula E. Uh this article here, this is from uh, NissanNews.com. They do explain how uh, there are some very high hopes, uh, high expectations for Nissan here in Rome. Uh, to give you an example, uh, Nissan has won here in the past. They've had success in Rome in the past. Last year, Nissan, the EDAMS team, scored 12 points, and their highest finish was in fifth place. Uh, if you combine that with let's just say six weeks ago at the last round, rounds three and four, sorry, rounds two and three in Mexico, Nissan had actually uh, gained six points uh, in, in Mexico. So you really see a good pattern from last year and hopefully riding off the momentum of the last rounds that hopefully come together and you'll see a very successful uh, results for the EDAMS team in Rome. Uh, what you see here is the layout of the uh, street track um, currently, uh, Nissan as a constructor is eighth. Uh, again, uh, at, for the, so far this season, this is season eight of of, Eda, uh, of Formula E. There are a total of sixteen rounds in, uh, in total. So again, after this weekend, we still have uh, pretty much three quarters. Uh, you know, what is it seventy five percent left? of your races for the season still. So we're still very, very early. Uh, so we'll find out what happens this weekend uh, for the EDAMS team. Uh, one other thing though, I do want to share though, this has to do with, uh, again, no really, no real stats about the cars, the drivers, but there was a very, very good opinion piece about Formula E that I wanted to share just briefly. Uh, and of course the title is the steps that Formula E must take to recapture its audience. And what they wrote, and the reason why I, I share this with you, because it, it shares exactly what I was thinking. And what the key that they're talking about here is that what they need to uh, recapture is uh, visibility. They're talking about being able to watch these races live on TV the moment it's happening. Uh, there are a number of issues that kind of prevent you from doing that. Uh, one is that there isn't re a real uh, channel that will host you know, the practice rounds, the qualifying rounds, uh, both races. Th there, that currently isn't happening. The only way you can really see it is through recaps on YouTube. So they really need to get a true... Uh, broadcasting partner as far as, as part of Formula E. Uh, to give you an example, one of the key phrases they gave here, which I really, really liked, was that uh, Formula E built a fan base when it was far harder to sell than it is today. So they've done it in the past. Formula E has had a very, very good success in the past. Uh, to give you an idea of how these numbers have been slipping, uh, 2019, they had 411 million viewers. If you dwindle that down to what's actually happening this year, 316 million. So you lost 100 million viewers within the last two years uh, in terms of broadcast attention. So if if the Formula E uh, powers that be can really get together and, and fix these issues, we can really see a huge increase uh, in the attention, and that leads into funding and really getting this this uh, this league uh, higher up in the ranks in terms of competition and... and, and um, popularity you know so that is uh essentially the article that you see here too of course we'll leave these in the show notes for you uh as, yeah. as well well we got a few one more thing that i wanted to kind of cover for and we've never really kind of covered this before is formula d um you know we've we've talked about it here in the past um you know uh 
here and there, uh, but we've never really committed to kind of ultimately um, talking about the event as a whole. Um, this uh, Formula D was just this last week, um, April 1st, April 2nd in Long Beach, California. And, um, you know, a few days before that, uh, we've got a, a really big surprise. And we kind of knew this when we talked about this on a prior episode, but we knew Chris Forberg, Forsberg had early access to the new Z. And uh, it just turns out that um, he had an opportunity to to get that car all together for the uh, to start with uh, competing for Formula D, Formula D. And uh, the car came out full NOS energy drink colors. And honestly, it's pretty darn impressive. Apparently, they worked through a lot of the nights and and had an opportunity to kind of put it out. Um, I did want to show a few photos here if you get an opportunity to check that out. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Mike, are you? That's me. That's me. Okay, go ahead. Gotcha. Right. Uh, never mind. Let me see here. It's an impressive uh, setup. Keep going. Way go down. Ahead. Keep on going down. You, you, you tell me when to stop. Keep uh, going. Keep going. Now you got <sighs> – this is the problem when somebody takes your steering wheel. That's right. <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, so Formula Drift uh, came out. Uh, I thought they did a pretty good job with the execution of the car. It looks pretty darn impressive. Um, um Chris Forsberg pretty much was the first uh, person with, with the opportunity to kind of get that car out there and make a debut of it um, in its colors, other than, you know, stateside. So uh, kudos to him for getting that done. Um, for talking a little bit more about Formula Drift, if you are becoming a fan, it, it is growing in popularity over the last few years. Uh, the next round of Formula Drift, Formula D, will be at Atlanta, Georgia, May 6th and 7th. That will be at Road. Atlanta and then after that you will get a little bit later in the month of May May 19th through 21st it'll be out in Orlando Florida so that'll be round three um, yeah so we'll continue to kind of report a little bit on it as it goes through the uh, the series um, Forsberg um, at this particular event uh, didn't do too bad he um, lost in the third round to a Ryan Turek um, and eventually who became the champion of the event, but still a good showing for a fresh out of the booth car. Um, you know, I think they're doing a damn good job with it. And, you know, knowing those guys, they'll probably be pretty competitive and, and put a best effort forward. So kudos to them and uh, kudos to Ford Burke for continuing to support the brand. And uh, that's all I've got on that. What I do need to say though, too, and I think we spoke about this earlier this week was, this was a hell of a way for Nissan to scrap a, uh, a, a, a prototype. Essentially, I would imagine this car was not street legal because it was a pre-production model. And as opposed to scrapping it, they gave it to somebody in the motorsports world and say, here, here you go, make us proud. And it's exactly what they did. And I, I, I really like that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Brian? What do you think? You, anything, you see anything in particular? You're a big track guy, so I mean... Uh, I mean, I, I took the time to watch the build on YouTube mm -hmm. and I learned a few things like maybe putting the motor mounts to the unibody. That's, that's rather genius. After you drop a lifter in the LS and you have to take the whole thing apart. Yeah. I think I'm going to put the motor mounts attached to the unibody in the future. <laughs> 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 so... I mean, cool. uh, watching the whole thing and, and, you know, going through the whole supply chain issues they were going through and adapting the long nights and everything, you know, it, it, it was fun to watch. It was fun to see the whole team really just antagonize each other to do better. And the whole thing, it was just fun to watch. It was, it was a good job. Awesome. And, of course, he's, you know, making four digits of horsepower that we all dream of, and, <laughs> you know. It, why not, right? If, who needs four digits of horsepower? Everybody, right? Everybody. Everybody needs that. Yeah. It, it, the drivetrain is a GTR drivetrain. I think we, we were talking about that earlier, too. It's not the VR30 that's in, that'll be in a production version car, but because the VR38 has had such a robust uh, tenure, you know, a, a lot of people have been able to been, – they've been able to really extract as much power as you can. Well, it's a VR38 with a four-speed dog box, similar to what I'm running in my Z. Mm. So it, it, it is the GTR engine with a less complicated drivetrain. That's... I mean, a four-speed dog box will take 
whatever you want to put at it. I mean, NASCAR puts a thousand foot pounds of torque at 10,000 RPMs for as long as the race runs. So a, a 30, 45 second slide, it'll take that all day. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you're right, man. That's uh, the car looks beautiful too. You know, I think they've done a pretty good, they've done a, a, a really good job on it. So uh, again, hopefully uh, they will, um, uh, have a, a greater result. I'm sure, to, again, this is the first round they've really been able to, aside from the practices that we, you know, we've seen, this is the first time they've really been competitive with it. So I'm sure everything is, uh, uh, to make it into the third round, uh, I'm sure future rounds will be even better. So, Yeah, season opener, third place, not bad. Not bad at yeah. all. Not bad I at think, all. Uh, yeah, it made third round. My apologies. So, yeah, they made it to the third round. That's pretty good for, for getting that far. So kudos to them. Um, yeah, uh, we've got a few more things to kind of go through here. Um, you know, this segment that we like to call, we haven't done one of these in a hot minute. Um, you know, we, we haven't done a shut up and take my money in a minute, Mike. So yes, we do. This is long overdue. I had been saving up a few things because I keep on seeing articles, new product that's come up, that's come along the way so far this year. And, uh, I I think we've got some pretty good ones. Yeah. Yeah, Let yeah, me yeah. take the first one here. Go for it. Shut up and take my money. So the uh, first thing I wanted to show you guys was the uh, something that I, I that just came out. I don't know if it's been out for a hot minute, but it, it, it ran across uh, my my radar. And basically, this is a, a 280Z AC dampener, but it's all set up on trigger. Uh, trigger wheel to rock mm. uh, basically timing control. I, I just thought it was like the coolest thing, and and this is this is getting very popular nowadays, but not in not for that platform. So I just thought it was just something kind of cool that's that's made its way, or, and I feel like these are going to be very popular moving forward from here. But just to be able to see it uh, utilized on that platform is pretty badass, in my opinion. So. It it really opens you up into so much tuning expandability because you know of course aside if you didn't have this setup you have a traditional distributor and now granted there are been a lot of good advances in distributors that are bluetooth connected and whatnot but when you actually have something with a, with a trigger wheel and you start looking into tuning software perhaps like a hall tech or a similar type of uh piggyback or uh, sorry a standalone uh, ecu system yeah. i mean we've seen it the, the these older, just how we're talking about retrofitting power, you know, certain power plants and certain cars, you're actually putting this new technology into an older engine and really just releasing this power that it's been there the entire time, you know, Yeah, uh, and, which is a good find. Yeah. And so these are going to be available and, and they're the company milk fab engineering who puts it together. I really thought they did a good job with, um, was starting to get it out there and starting to uh, entertain the opportunity for people to get it in They're They're still obviously uh, getting some of the details out on it, but they have the product available either, either in a 36 to one or a 60 to two, 60 to two tooth wheel from what I understand. And mm-hmm. then um, it's apparently going to be adaptable for the L24, L26 um, application. So basically your four the cylinders, I'm oh, sorry, your, your uh, inline the six. Four, the six, yeah, the inline yeah. six and the inline four from what I understand. So, um, I've again, a very cool item. I don't have any pricing on this one, but again, um, something to definitely check out, um, if you get a chance. So I just thought it deserved a bit of a, a nod. I thought it was a cool product. It surely is, man. Good find. Good find. Um, I've got one. I'll, I'll share mine uh, on this. Uh, let's go for it. So I'm a big fan of Inkies. Uh, I actually, uh, specifically the RPF ones, so we call them the RPF everyones because these are so popular. They're, they're affordable and they're lightweight. For anybody who's just looking for a solid answer to a lightweight wheel, fairly priced, the Inky, you really can't go wrong. Uh what makes these special is that these are actually with a six lug configuration. And Miles, you know, we are both the the six twenty pickup owners. The six twenty yeah. is six lug, so you really up until I mean this it's, this entire time finding a proper wheel with the six lug configuration has been very very difficult to find. And when you combine uh, what I like about this wheel now as a six lug, 
I, you know, I had to share it with everybody. So here I am, right? So uh, you know what's funny is I've been watching this wheel progress for yeah. a hot minute, dude. Um, cause so so I'm I'm definitely a six twenty fan, but the biggest thing is this six lug pattern. Trying to find something that was sexy, and you know, I went so far as to go into Joust, try yeah. to find an old Watsonabe style. A banana finger rim <laughs> you know uh and honestly the only thing that w- inky made a design like that years ago and i bought a set for some ridiculous drift tax price <laughs> out of japan and i got them and they're amazing but guess what i can only get them in 16 inches so what's crazy about these new rpf ones 16 17 18 and then you know if i know these guys like i do because i'll i have rpf ones on everything i own if i can help it (laughs) so i have them on all my z32s i absolutely love the rpf ones inky makes phenomenal rims if you didn't already know but the problem is they're very popular but i don't give a damn they look good look sexy that's what i roll so if i can have my z32 matching my dots in 620 guess what you're gonna do it gonna roll so i don't know man i might be letting go of a set of banana fingers just to uh (laughs) who knows one of these but again very cool item i did see it come through um you know the only other thing that i found that was remotely kind of cool um to this was that um there were some other six lugs that were making their way for for some of the retro guys um, mm. that fit the same pattern. So yeah, man, uh, very cool. Uh, I I am super super excited about that uh, uh, about potentially buying those for myself. They're very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I've got another one here. Uh, this one was actually uh, I've seen it for other models, but the fact that someone's actually built it. Uh, or had one made for the uh, Datsun uh, L series motor. Again, we're getting back into the L series uh, Nissans. Uh, also, uh, again for the SR20 and a few other ones. Now, I mean, it is kind of a uh, excessive. I mean, but it's a it's a nice little touch, which is, of course, you've got here in this case 3D printed uh, oil filler uh, funnels, but they're threaded. You can literally thread it into the valve cover like you would a typical oil cap. And then begin to just pour your oil. So there's, I don't know, granted a regular oil filter, uh, oil uh, funnel will do the trick. This is just like that next level. Just like, it's like a, hey, look at me, you know, look what I got, you know. I don't, and, and it's 3D printed. So they're actually selling the, the, the building file, the STL file to, for you to make this on your own. And actually, I've got one here with me. So check this out. This is a 3D print, and I want to give props out to Ion, uh, our buddy, who uh, went ahead and had this printed for me. But same thing here. You've got 3D printed threads onto an oil filler. Boom, there you go. And th- this thread pattern is used. I want to say there's many more Nissan that you can actually apply this to. So um, really cool little option. So if you are interested in this, Kyusha Speed Shop, uh, dot com dot au so it's an Australian company but you can see here the uh, 3D print uh, again they'll either sell it to you or they'll give they'll sell you the STL file to where you can print it yourself yeah that's a pretty good one yeah, so you yeah take my money. you know the funny thing about it is just no more are you going to be pouring your oil trying to make it into that little hole on the L valve mm. cover and it just the wind comes and <laughs> just and shoots it all over the side of your block and you're like son of a <laughs> and it's just the wind's just kind of blowing out. Yep. I mean, what? And just just here, enough to this, push that, that this, drip of oil to the side. Or you could be that confident guy that just like does it without the foil and they just unload. And you just go like that. <laughs> Quickly. Like, you got to get the nozzle into that hole as fast as possible. You know, there's, there's only like three ways to really do it. You either have to be the guy that goes to the funnel, you got to be the guy that does that, or you got to be the guy that like. <laughs> It does the slow pour like you're a bar. Yeah. Like you, like you have this mustache in a, in a Starbucks and that's yeah. <laughs> the slow pour over the shoulder. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Be so said, Miles, what kind of guy are you? Are you the, you the slick stuffer or are you the slow guy? After years of cleaning up my own messes. Cause I, I have the <laughs> shaky hand for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm going to say I am a, uh, I'm a funnel dude and I have every funnel you could ever imagine. And I still spill shit all over the place. Mike, I, I you a I, hand, funnel guy, stuffer? I, I am. So this, this is actually a good story. Uh, um, I'm a half and half guy. And let me explain when I, the, 
the the 350Z, the stock motor, is known for burning oil. So I'm always filling up. I'm always topping off on oil, well, right? Got a six, so that's notorious in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, an 06, exactly. So what I do is that I buy – so when I do an oil change, I buy the five-quart and the filter special, right? And then I'll buy a second five-quart container just to be my backup for the next 3,000 miles. And I'll finish that sucker off within 3,000 miles, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it is. So in the beginning, when that when that container is still like topped off, like it's still a full container – I'm using a funnel all day, no problem, because I'm going to make a mess. But as that that oil gets is, is used and used, when it's nearing the end, like the bottom quarter of a of a container, then I get brave and I start to pour the because I have enough um, reaction time because you can you can you can feel the oil uh, coming down the line. So yeah, so I, I guess I'm a hybrid between uh, you know, <laughs> just depends on how full the container is. <laughs> But you're, you are driving a hybrid. You burn oil and gas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it potentially overheats. Yeah. It's a. It's yeah. Kind of how it works. It, every system is is always touched by Mike, and it's yeah. not it's not by choice. So yeah, it is what it is. Yep. So, one of these days yeah, we'll get no. your car going. Yep. So uh, um, next thing I wanted to kind of talk to you about oh. is actually I found another cool product. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, another cool one that I wanted to bring up was uh, Skillard. I actually had put this out a little while ago, and Mike, um, go ahead and give me the steering wheel. Sure. See, sure unless sure. you want to. Sure. No, I'll give it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to control everything. All right. Um, so this is actually from Skillard.com. Uh, uh, they've been, um, and I kind of said this before, uh, they're kind of bringing back the cool factor for the 280ZX, you know, for the everyman. Um, they've been coming up with a lot of really um, cool things for their project cars, and now they're adapting them and making them available for all the 280ZX guys. I mean, it almost makes you want to potentially uh, find them if you weren't already a fan of them and you're just like, you were kind of on the fence. I would get yeah. a chance to kind of check out the the Skillard page because you you can still get 280ZXs at a reasonable price right now. I'm just saying, maybe you want to go out there, find yourself a slick top 280ZX, and look at some of this stuff and make it make it your own. But again, coming back to this, uh, Skillard has put out a quarter window uh, louver that we me and Mike kind of thought was pretty awesome. Um, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, I mean, you know, other people have done the louvers, but I think it just kind of goes so well with the stock louver that's there. And it's just something that's very cool. I personally like it in the black. Um, I don't have a photo of it here, but yeah, I think they did a pretty damn good job of it. So just something kind of cool for you to check out. I like it. I like it. Yeah, Skeleton's done some really good work. Uh, we've had him on the show, Ben Lillard. Uh, so always taking ideas. If there's always a need, uh, he, he he always listens. And uh, this is public. This is one of them. Again, the side louver. He he already, he's already done the rear louver for the back. Uh, hatch glass. Now he's got them for the rear quarter glass. So nice touch. They come in, they come in the raw and then they, they raw dog and then they come in black powder <laughs> coat. So if you get a chance. So. <laughs> yeah. The, the last one I had here, uh, Brian, you know, we asked you if, is, if there's anything in particular that, that, that you uh, saw that you would want to buy. And I know you, sh you shared with me a video and I can post it up. Did you want to talk about it? I'll just put a screenshot of it's, it's an S 30 C with, the Z logo in legs. Yeah, that's it. That's money. That's, that's money. That's money office chair. I just put yeah. some factors under it. That That's money. That's That looks good. Uh, you know, I, I had seen people make their own concoctions here and there, but it was always done – it was always a hack job. It was just mm -hmm. something to do. And the fact that they've done this, you know, a nice crafted wood, you know, uh, stained uh, – it's a really nice touch. Yeah. Just the yeah. nice uh, inline skate casters, the nice rubber, you know, soft rubber wheels. Uh -huh. That's a new office chair. Oh, I think you just created the next uh, the next racing scene just uh, with the seats. Now we're going to take the OEM seats and start racing them. Well, yeah. Uh, well, when I told you guys, I'd love to see it with a, a Z33 seat because, I mean, that's kind of my generation of, of Z car. Yeah. And my, my posteriors. Kind of used to those seats, so it's a it, it 
fits. If it fits, it chips. <laughs> I felt like I was just, I like, I just, I wish I had the sound bit for like, I like big. All right. I got you. I see what you're saying. It's getting <laughs> thicker these days. The pandemic pounds are adding up. <laughs> so you're, you're a thick, you're a. <laughs> I, I'm not you're quite a, you're, pun, but I'm not quite svelte. You're a BBW. That's yeah. right. <laughs> God dang it! <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right. Well, Let's go online. Let's go. see. We we did have a lot of uh, comments here within this last segment here. Oh, okay. uh, let's go for it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ion did mention about that 3D printed oil filler. He says that Z Car Depot is now a reseller for them. So for anybody who's listening, like the idea of a threaded filler cap, check out Z Car Depot. Uh, when we were talking about the uh, timing components for the L series motors. Jonathan here said that a Bluetooth distributor, you can't hide money. Uh, saying, I'm assuming it, it's, a, it's such a good purchase. You've got to get one. Uh, I've been actually curious about these too. I know one of these days when my factory distributor goes bad, I'm going to want to upgrade. Uh, so that's going to be one of them, I think. Um, yeah, and, and we've seen a couple of variations of that. And we'll start doing a little more of these, shut up and take my money. But there's, I don't know, I feel like since COVID happened, there's a lot of guys sitting in their garage with extra time. And there's just a lot of cool stuff has kind of come out within the last year or two. And we just need to kind of make it uh, a little more available uh, and known here. And we'll definitely try to do that for you as we continue on with these episodes. We'll, we'll definitely try to stamp out more time for shut up and take my money. So Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, man, uh, this is the this is the moment here. Now, this is where we get to sit down and talk to Brian about Z days, man. This uh, is. I thought, I thought you'd never bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You got one reserved right there. Yes. So we're going to talk Z days <laughs> with Brian Settle. Uh, of course, I mean, I don't, I, I haven't met anybody who doesn't know about Z days. So it's really hard. I have, I've never, I haven't had to explain it for a long time. So. Uh, Man, well, we had you on last year uh, for for talking Z days as well. You're actually this is the, uh, you're our first uh, returning guest, so we get to recap. Yeah, I figured uh, the last don't episode. Ruin it. Don't ruin it for everybody, Brian. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll put on the old school marm. Oh damn! Oh man! Uh, oh man! You got that? That now? You're, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Last year, you know, you were talking about how Z Days was uh, has a new venue at Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Right. I, you know, I just figured to just check in with you. How, how did last year go? And then we, let's talk about this year. Uh, so last year, I mean, there was a lot of uh, unknowns for everybody, including us. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the feedback we got was meow, uh, well received. Uh, with some good constructive uh, criticism, but the town, the venue, the host, Tanger Outlets, the egg roll shop, all the breweries, I mean, it, it, it was a good time. It really was fun. It was less stress. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with everything new, everybody is anxious, and, you know, we were at the other facility, everybody had their routines down. So here we're building oh. new habits, right? So good point. And, as you look for new habits, you try new things. That's and a good a lot of things to try. That's a good point. I mean, uh, you know, before when you're out uh, at near the tail of the dragon, now you've got this whole new set of cruises, whole mm -hmm. new uh, compound of, of places to stay. Um, you're 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 actually in civilization. That's a, that's a diff That's a change and a, a good thing. And if I, if I may, yeah, you can still tell your boss there's no cell phone coverage. <laughs> you can do not disturb, and yeah. you can still tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that that's a nice hack right there. You're right. So, so if you don't want to be interrupted, or put keep keep your cell phone in airplane mode the entire weekend of of, yeah. uh, of Z days, yeah. the entire week of Z days. <laughs> no. Wait, I keep going. I'm sorry. Oh no problem. No, oh not at all. Um. So yeah, you're, you said it's a lot of firsts, um, kind of playing things out. Uh, that's kind of a really good thing because after event, uh, after hosting an event for so many years, you're, you're again you're almost at two decades now, nineteen years of Z days, and we're talking about last year. You get it's 
it's a whole newness to it. That's a whole new set of opportunities. Uh, not only learning new things, but just new opportunities for different types of events, different types of feedback. Um, was there anything special about last year? Uh, I mean, you said the feedback was good. So anything else? I mean, it, it was, I mean, for the staff and the volunteers, it was a breath of fresh air. It's the yeah. first time in a long time we shot from the hip. I mean, ah. you know, cause we've been in the same place for so long and frankly, we ran out of things to do ideas. We, were, we would beg people for something. Give me a new idea. I remember that. Yeah. So now in the new venue, everything's new. Uh, and when I say new, it's uh, – let, let me give you just the highlights. So at the old facility, there was a couple of good roads. Yeah. Here, uh, there's 30 or 40 good roads. And I would say good, I mean speed limits are 55. There's guardrails on both sides of the road. <laughs> it's less patrolled. If you run out of asphalt and talent at the same time, there's a guardrail to potentially save your butt. Yeah. Um, there's five breweries within a five minute stumble of each other. I mean, can you imagine a Z Days pub crawl? We did because it's on the schedule. It's on the schedule. Yeah. It's a Z Days pub crawl in real pubs. I mean, and now we have a population of 1,100. <laughs> we can potentially double the town's population for a weekend. Um, a pub crawl was unheard of too, because of course, uh, out near the Dragon, there there was literally a, a a single bar. That was it. So now you've got f- not only five bars per se, but breweries. They, they literally brew the beer breweries. right there. There's more bars. Bars. But we used to do a cabin crawl, and every club would kind of host their own thing and whatnot. But now you don't have to trash your cabin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And did I mention the egg roll place? Oh. oh. <laughs> you, 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 you know, I, 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 what I did preparing for this for for having you on the show is that i listened to the last episode too and uh i think you mentioned it once this agro place miles we need to check this place out you seem to be a really big fan uh of these these fusion treats or meals i, st- I still say that i created the sushi rito uh many many <laughs> years ago and i still don't get credit for it i came up with chili in a cone hasn't kicked off yet still haven't got my check yet <laughs> Um, I came up with, uh, uh, what is spicy ketchup? That was all me. I don't know. If <laughs> uh, still haven't got my check on that one. Either. Jalapeno ice cream. <laughs> I did. I did. I came up with that one. Uh, 17 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 I come up with a lot of good ideas that I just don't embark on and somebody else takes advantage of it. Waiting for that I, check. I'm Miles. sure. I'm pretty sure I'm monitored. Like I'm pretty sure. I'm sure I'm, I'm being tracked we all, are, just stealing all my good we ideas are. so i got a probe somewhere in me <laughs> on. <laughs> too easy too easy, easy. i, I want to share a, a photo <laughs> and I, I i do need a little explanation on this one um this was a number What's of years on? back um i want to say this is probably one of the night parties that uh, this is actually from 2016 one of the deck parties Mm -hmm. and yeah um i was gonna say man uh there is i'm not gonna drop names but that is a young man from michigan dancing with a young lady from florida and z days has always been a family friendly affair event until the sun goes down and now once the sun goes down Put the kids to bed. Put put your adult underwear on and let's go have some fun. Or take your adult underwear off and go have some fun. But um, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, um, I think that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing here new. I mean, this is how Z days roll. I mean, we've got we've got all kinds of. Shenanigans. Yeah. But I do want to kind of um, show, I mean, you guys have had a pretty host uh, of some pretty crazy stuff. And honestly, like, 
I was pretty envious of not being able to attend as much as I wanted to because you had a lot of vehicles that I didn't get an opportunity to check out. Like, for example, um, this one um, <laughs> that I had found, um, this showed up at the event. I never got a chance to see it, man. And I was like, I was super bummed about it. And I was super enthusiastic of, of, uh, of seeing it, but it just seems like it just made your event for a hot minute. And, uh, yeah, that Cummings Nissan. And, uh, I mean, just to show an example, I think when we went, the year that I went was the Uke that the, the year that the Juke R made it out there. Yeah. Still one of my favorite uh, that vehicles, and, and that was a damn good one. How you managed to pull some of the coolest cars that I wanted to see to the event, uh, I'll still never know, and kudos to you for doing it. So. Uh, I, I will say I think the only reason you didn't get them was the close proximity of dates of our events. Yes. Hard to be in two places at one time. Uh, and you know we we've got the same cheerleaders inside of Nissan. I, I just think it was a matter of logistics. But thank I you for feel the like I feel like I always buy I buy decent beer for the people that I need to get stuff done. I feel like you buy better beer, and and that's the only reason why you get better stuff than me. And I'm uh, not it's it is, deny that comment. And just you know, and, and I'm gonna say right now, still well, I'm looking at you. I'm not saying there's any. <laughs> the the thing is, the, you know, we were in Graham County, North Carolina, which yeah. is the moonshine capital oh, of the world. You don't so have to remind me. I still beer. got. I still You're got some beer, not 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 mason jars. Yeah, <laughs> I remember a gentleman showing up in an IROC Z28, maybe, and he popped the back of the hatch. And, and keep in mind, it was a very fuzzy week uh, for a lot of different reasons. But I remember buying way too much moonshine from this gentleman out of an IROC Z28. Hell of a nice guy. Um, and yeah, um, yeah. And that's kind of when the cloudiness began. So <laughs> it doesn't go away for a few days. It does not go away for a few days. But again, uh, I, I again I can't speak to how much fun I had at your events. And there is a certain uh, there's just a certain sense of family. Uh, I think when when I went to it, family. absolutely. I'm just, I'm not Vin Diesel family, but I mean like some uh, some real kind of like <laughs> you're all you all took the effort to kind of get there, kind of a little bit out of the way, and it's a amazing backdrop i mean everything you always choose these amazingly great backdrops for everything and then um you also get some great folks to show up i mean so the attitude is always amazing um you know you you always feel like you're welcome and um that hospitality just does not go yeah. um uh, uh unnoticed so yeah you you and all the volunteers that come in they all really set the tone to how the the openness and willingness to make new friends and it it may not be said no one ever tells you talk to somebody you don't know no it's just their attitude towards you encourages you to do it on your own and i mean that's just something that's about uh, something about z days like that it's just that you know i've made a lot of friends out there people look at me like i am z days i'm just a trained monkey with a microphone <laughs> z days is the but you're our monkey. monkey. You are our monkey, Brian. I, I'm the trained monkey. <laughs> I'm on a short leash. Michelle's got the other end. Yeah. But it is the community. It is the camaraderie. It is the enthusiasts that speak to each other. And, and that as long as there are more than two people want to come to a Z days, we will run a Z days. Period. Amen, man. Where, wait, as long as there's more than two, as long as there's more than me and Michelle, we <laughs> <laughs> out who's got a wet towel? This is like, this is... <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if it's just Michelle and I, we'll just hang out here at the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you mentioned uh, last year's uh, – the success of last year's events, how you said there is a plethora of new types of opportunities and events that are, that are around Blowing Rock, uh, the, the, the host of, of Z-Days uh, currently. And I mean um, 
I, I see this as a great opportunity, though. I mean, if you want to, let's let's get into this year. What, what's new for this year? What do you have planned? What, what's yeah. uh, what, what's going on? Yeah, so this year we're based out of the American Legion Hall, which is proper downtown. Okay. Um, we'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to run registration, um, casino night, um, vendor midway. I don't have my notes in front of me. I'm poorly, poorly prepared. This is all about no, or, I, <laughs> here's the ram, but it, uh, that is home base it, for Wednesday through Friday. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. No, yes. Yes, was, sir. I come. I have to show my age. I, I come prepared, sir. Oh, no worries. <laughs> oh yeah, we've got, we've got an awesome disc golf course. Now, granted, you know, you talk about Nissan nerds, disc golf nerds. There's, there's fewer of those of us in the Nissan world, but there's an awesome disc golf course out in Banner Elk. We're going to try um, casino night. We're going to try to put on a true casino night at the American Legion Hall. I, I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I think if I live closer to a gambling state or town, I would be a raging bad gambler, honestly. So I like the idea of these bringing in for one night only or, you know, for a weekend Casino night. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I like that. What we did last time, and it's been a, a decade plus an eon since we did a casino night, was whoever had the most chips got the first pull out, out of the prize pack. And then oh. the, the next biggest stack of chips got the second pool. So you're not playing for money. Yeah. You're, you're playing for first dibs, second dibs, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we try to make that prize barrel worth digging into. But 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 it because it's in North Carolina, you cannot wager for money. Okay, so yeah. There, there's no buy-in. You, you get a starting stack of chips, and there'll be roulette, there'll be craps, there'll be several forms of poker, and then you know we're not playing winner take all. We're we're, we're playing to a time. Biggest mm -hmm. stack of chips, first dive. Second stack of chips, second dive, and so on. I, I like it, that. It'd be fun. I mean. I'm betting it on on black. I'm a big roulette guy personally, so yeah. 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 <laughs> I like to play the edges of roulette and the edges of craps. Don't don't make me the roller. I'll just play the edge. It's I can drink beer for free at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's just the fun. It's the excitement. Again, you, you know, it's not about the wage or you, it's not about the money at the end. Again, it's just like it's a good time to the to, to have fun with your friends to do this stuff. You know, absolutely. And then uh, Friday morning, we're going to have uh, a 5, 10K. VMA is brave enough to run the 10K. All <laughs> that goes to wax or tags. I think we're charging 25, 30 bucks per entry. I eat the T-shirt. We cut a check for 30 bucks per person to wax or tags. If you don't know who wax or tags are, mm -hmm. they take dogs out of kill shelters train them and give them to veterans with PTSD and other disabilities. So we're saving two lives at a time. And That's if you important. don't like vets and you don't like pets. Like who, <laughs> there's something wrong. Yeah. You need, you yeah, need to visit. There's, there's a malfunction there, right? Yeah. That, that you know, and, and I was thinking about this earlier, you know, I've, this is one of the things I like about, about your event is that, I haven't ever seen a, a car festival include a marathon like this, a 5K. Not, it's not a marathon, a 5K, right. where that – I mean, you're literally giving everybody who are actually being there for the five days a taste of – again, it probably – I'm assuming this event may have come from some sort of um, – uh, someone may have suggested it, and it just kind of caught fire, I'm assuming, where uh, – 10, 12 years ago, back when I was trying to get skinny and fit, I was running there a lot. And then it just became, well, hey, there was a couple other runners in the group and became an idea. That is and, cool. And, you know, there, there are people who run it for real. And then there are people like Trevor who show up at 9 o'clock in the morning with a coffee pot full of Tom Collins. Whew. And they will walk it drinking a Tom Collins. <laughs> But you know what? Yes. The same money and the same love goes to Wags or Tags. And it's good for a good cause. And that's another thing we should point out too is that you've always 
it, you mentioned it before. Uh, you know, Z Days as an event, as an entity, it, it it's it is a not for profit company. Whereas every dollar that is residual from every year goes directly to charity, and that's so admirable, man. Again, it's not none of this is about any type of. Um, uh, cap, 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 capitalist, you know, motivation. It's just, just for the community. You yep. couldn't pay me enough to put this much work into an event. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. speaking to two other event organizers, you know the feeling. Yes. This is a labor of love. There's it, no it, amount of money that would make this happen. It, it, we, we do it for the love of community and those that we can't help. And this is almost like, I mean, Z Days, I mean, like like many events, Z Days, you're essentially hosting a family reunion in some cases. You know, I'm assuming a certain percentage of those who always come in are the the old school, the, the OGs of the events. And it's yeah. always a great time. Again, yeah, to, again, even if you're walking a 5K, you're still doing it. You're making these memories, seeing some old friends. And even if you're not participating in the 5k per se mm -hmm. you're probably on the porch heckling those that are doing it <laughs> <laughs> here's to those who want it i mean it's that kind of, i mean you put a thousand people in an area that big yeah like-minded second cousins <laughs> yeah. yes be had. And, be, and, you know, it's there and and what and what I can tell is that every heckle is is sewn together with love. Nobody means it. It's the funness of everything. You're on vacation. You're at a car show, and you're with these people that are, you get. You know, you take a bullet for. Yeah. You know, yeah. Nobody yeah. nobody means fake it till you make it. Yelled out. You know. <laughs> really. Well, you I know. Mean, <laughs> when you see a gentleman from Ohio, I won't name him, Corbett. Dragging a Harbor Freight Jack up and down those hills as part of a 5K, Oof. dressed up in a BRE race suit. <laughs> pit crew. That's not faking it. That's sending oh it. Oh my God. Wow. He, they, they did that. You're telling me? Yeah. They yeah. were dragging uh, we jacks. Know, the, the COE showed up in BRE pit crew uniforms. One had a gas oh can, God. one had a jack, and I can't remember what the other one had. But yeah, they 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 did it. I mean, wow! I was about my own experience, I can't run for anything, and I. Oh, well, they didn't run. Like they're, they're, they're the council of elders. They didn't. <laughs> they did it though. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, God, I mean, I, I was always brought up that if you had one or two close friends in your life, you've done something. I am so blessed with hundreds, maybe brave enough to say thousands of people I can call friends. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. For a car event? Yeah. It's not a car event. It's not a car event. It, it's, it's a family event. It is. And it's a great opportunity to make to make family, seriously. I mean, to if, if you're a car guy and you're listening to us and you're just trying to make some friends, maybe you're a young guy, this is Z Days would be the event that you need to go to. It'll get you into the Z community on a real level. And you're talking hardcore Z fans. And again, you know, there is a car show, by the way, as part of Z Days. That's a traditional event. But how you mentioned, Z Days is a five-day show and – the car show is only one and you know you mentioned all these other events that are non-car related really mm -hmm. and that's where you this, that was your time to actually uh create stories with the other enthusiasts and make friends like that right. it's it, it's it really is kind of a it, it's it, Miles, you, I think you talked about it last time about being similar to Burning Man, where like <laughs> goes, it's the closest thing to Burning Man that's car related. Where you mentioned it, it's would, memories, it's it's it builds character. You, you walk away with new friendships that it will never go away. How else would you? You, don't, you definitely do not come back the same per. It, like it changes you in a way. Like it, it's not like prison change. It's more just like. <laughs> <laughs> 
or you know Is war <laughs> but i would say no no i meant like in a good way like you had a really good experience and i don't know anybody that has not had an opportunity to go to that event that didn't have a positive experience but it, it just the reason why I say it, it changes you is just, just like you'll go to another event and you just run into friends and then you're just you're set, you know, like I, I went and I had a really good time at Z-Days and I met people that we just clicked and connected. And we had such a good time at that, like every other car event that you would see, you would see these people in the same circles. Um we would click because of the Z days event. I'm not saying anybody's better event is better than the other, but it was just like you, you share the experiences, you know, you have an opportunity to kind of really commit to, to getting to know people because of the way you've had the layout of Z days, because it was so not necessarily isolated, but essentially you just had, it was just continuation, uh, you know, over and over the next day, the next day, the next day. And it was constant events. So it was constant entertainment, constant involvement. And, um, and that was the thing. I mean, I don't really know anybody else, like even me, uh, a person that puts this many events into a single day. Like I pretty much am like a two day, like a three, three event per day. And, and I'm hitting the max. <laughs> you were always like, I'm doing four, I'm doing five things in a day. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, that's just a lot, you know? So, uh, but, mean, it, but then again, it's like, let's it, talk a little it, bit about it the, wasn't the, or the, it uh, wasn't and, and the volunteers that, that, that kind of, put it put it together i mean you have an army of voluntold folks that uh that kind of step up to the plate um year after year and and again i wanted to take a few moments to recognize some of those folks and we won't individually go with anybody but we'll just recognize the entity that is the voluntold z days crew whether you past and present so uh kudos to them because i know those people uh help to put on one of the best shows uh, when you guys put them together so yeah, yeah absolutely i mean the, the volunteers voluntolds the, there is no event of any size that can be executed without good volunteers and we at z days had the cream of the crop I mean, we, we, hey, hey Z Rock, uh, can you do X? And they would execute at a level of 12 of 10. Hey, Z Atlanta. Hey, Carolina Z Club. Hey, Central Florida Z Club. And all of these clubs, they just they took their event, they owned it. And, and I mean, I'm a perfectionist. They blew me away with it. Hmm. It's just, just phenomenal people. And I'm I'm still blessed with that. That's 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 great. They you know I've always heard. Um, of course, the volunteers. It doesn't volunteers or not. It's like when you find somebody at their core is passionate about the same thing you're passionate about. Then then finding the right person. It, it's not. It, it doesn't. It's no longer hard because when you know y'all have the same vision of of a. Uh, I mean, in this case, you know, Nissan and Z cars, once you've got that same passion, uh, there's a whole wavelength that's established that you, you just know that their ex level of expectation uh, mm -hmm. almost matches yours. You know? And if we back up 15 minutes, you're talking to your second cousin again, year after year. So it's just that, oh, man, last year it was good. Let's change just one little thing. And it just, it's just, it's magical at that point. And God, it's I, 15 years of running it. I, don't, <laughs> I cannot imagine my life without it. I mean, people I've met, relationships I've made. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if you don't know, I'm, a, I'm an ordained minister. So we've renewed a couple of vows. We've had a wedding at Z Days. Yeah. Uh, it's family. The, it's family. The, there's a great. It's family you want to have. Let me back that. <laughs> it's the family you get to choose. <laughs> uh, that there's a phrase that I've heard, and I, and maybe it might relate. You're talking about where um, uh, selflessness is the greatest thing you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. Where again, you're doing this for the cause. You're doing this because you love certain things. You're reaching out with others, and it just 
and there was no intention of being paid back anything, but it just brought back tenfold what you were putting out to the world, you know. And uh, it sounds like it's exactly what's happening, you know, your experiences as, as organizer. I would like to highlight one thing from last year. Um, it, it stemmed from a tragedy. So we had a recon trip October 2020 at Blue and Rock. Okay. And one of our longtime friends, Dave Udy, um, contracted COVID, passed mm-hmm. away from due to complications of it. And Sean, uh, Sean is his, not his son, but semi adopted son. Uh, yep. Very good friend, very good family of family. And a lot, his Z32 and some other stuff was will to Sean. So oh. we brought Sean to Z Days 2021 in Blue and Rock and introduced him to the, his new Z family. There yeah. were some tears, there were some hugs. But when you take a guy who is not a car person, and he inherits a car because of a, a, a personal tragedy. And then you've got 250 people hugging him, welcoming him to their he, their new family. That hits in the fields. I mean, that hits. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's as genuine and as real as it gets. Wow. Like, it, he... In, to be introduced, I mean, he is in, in a way, I mean, inherited the family mm-hmm. with the car. Car was a bonus. Car I was think. a bonus. I mean, yeah. the Zeke too. It was a bonus, but yeah, he got the whole family. Yeah, and the fact that they 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 were proactive and said, "No, you you're going to be here," and you know, we we're, 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 kicking we're, and screaming. He came. <laughs> He's coming back, so we didn't scare him off too bad. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. How was he at the end of the event? You know, if he was reluctant at first, how was he? Huh? He pretty drunk that night. <laughs> the next day was pretty cloudy, as Miles has uh, and, and, and noted. But, uh, yeah, it, he's part of the family now. Wow. And, it, and, and it's, that's just – I mean, I'll go back to our byline. Z-Days is – by enthusiast for enthusiast. Yeah. And that's as real as it gets. It is. I mean, like I said, there, there's the, the greatest intention. I mean, it's, uh, I, I can't, I mean, it's, it's, it's a win win. I mean, just whether it's your first time or, or no matter, no matter what, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, um, yeah, so let, let's get back to, um, you know, how can people uh, really know about the event? And let's, you know, uh, I think we've talked a little bit about the schedule, but let's talk about the website um, and details on how people can find the event right now. So it is Z Days. There you go. <laughs> com, uh, Z-D-A-Y-Z dot com. Um, everybody's invited. If you would be so kind as to RSVP with a register, uh, we're, we're trying to rent a few facilities. So we just kind of need a head count to know what size facility, whether it's a Waffle House or, or, or something larger. Uh, but just register if you're coming. But at ZDays.com, you can find lodging links, schedule, our wonderful, wonderful partners. I, do I have time to run through them? Sure. Oh, absolutely. All right. Let's start off at the top. Nissan Motorsports is coming. Fast Intentions, Redline Design out of Tampa, Soho Motorsports. Pardon me. Z- Bubbles. Z1 Motorsports, Z Speed. Uh, Michelle Side Gig, Athletic Training Services. If you don't know us, Inappropriate Motorsports. <laughs> uh, Tango Outlets, Retromotive. If you don't know Tony, I'll point him out to you. Soul Stummer, powder, powder coating. The COE may or may not make it this year. We've got Zcon in Birmingham. Uh, Z Nationals, Z1. Hannah Graham Photography, Juno Photography. You guys, Nissan Nerd Podcast. Thank you, sir. 
here on a Z Club, Hudson Valley Z Club, Z Rock, Z Club of Florida, Z Atlanta, Central State of Florida Z Club. There's two I'm missing that I don't have up on the website. I do apologize. And that's my roll call. <laughs> <laughs> it's like doing car show awards when the air conditioner went out. Oh, uh, man. I, 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 I want to keep it brief. I, I, we cannot do this event without the volunteers nor the corporate partners. I say partners because it's reciprocity. It goes back and forth. We're, not, we're going to lay on your wallet, but you're going to get a return. So there we go. Without a doubt. I mean, I, I mean, as someone who's been there before, I, I, I've essentially purchased most of these automotive companies. It's like I, I, I've either shook in their hand, met them in person, got to know them, shared a drink with them. Yeah. And it's Carbotech. Great Carbotech. Guys. I'm sorry. I dropped that one. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, of course, uh, right here as a, a, a 106 octane partner. I like the fact that you instead of saying platinum, gold, silver, bronze, it's octane level. That's that's creative. I like that. Well, I should probably update that to like E85. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I'm I'm not one to burn E85, but now they're just bought a twin turbo project car. Yeah, you might be in that world soon. That's a good point. That's. Yeah. It's what 114 octane. That's that, that's the next level up. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you you bring up a good point. Uh, uh well, we, we definitely want to talk about what's going on in your life. But before we do that, uh, we definitely want to go ahead and promote. Uh, just how you mentioned. I want to reiterate. You said, like you said, um, if anybody's considering of going, definitely. Reser go to registration, book the registration as early as you can. Uh, that's going to help set up logistical numbers for the events so that I, I would imagine, you know, there are uh, miles and you know this too, as an event organizer, there are, uh, how do you prepare so many meals for the dinner? How do you prepare so many uh, promotional giveaways or goodie bags? If you don't know the, the a real true number. And so, by by RSVPing and registering early, it really leads into the ultimate success of the events, where you get everything you were expected to get. Right. You know, uh, correct. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean headcount is is everything um, when you're doing events, and and it really does a huge service for the people that are putting it on. It really kind of gives them an opportunity to sometimes even step up your game. If you know you have a certain headcount, you know that you have a certain value and you can kind of add in some additional goodies and kind of make an event, you know, uh, kick up to a next level. You can crank it from 10 to 11 <laughs> in certain aspects um, like food and, and some of the goodies that kind of come into place. So um, yeah. Uh, but like I said, uh, it, again, it always does a huge courtesy. I cannot, advise people enough to to register early the pre-regs are always nice for the get discount but ultimately not being that guy that shows up um don't be that guy that's a good <laughs> point kind of pre-registration don't be the guy so yeah, yeah. two things like oh ab absolutely uh two things i was thinking about is that yes uh Miles and I are preparing a goodie item for Z Days. So for those who are listening, we've got some Z. Uh, actually, this is probably one of our first times doing Nissan Nerd swag. So that'll are, be at Z Days. Are we popping your cherry? I mean, I'm just, just asking. I think you are. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the arrow does point. Uh, well, speaking of cherries, the cherry on top would be that you mentioned earlier, Nissan is bringing the new Z car to display. Uh, uh, for anybody who hasn't seen it yet or wants to get some time. And that's what's really cool about Z Days is that, you know, Nismo and, and the, the, the Wranglers of these amazing cars, you get some real good time, talk to them, kind of schmooze it up a little bit. Who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll let you, uh, you know, maybe they'll have some fun with the Z car and you can be witness to that too. I would, I would, I would hope. Uh, so yeah, you, you I, never no, know. don't know what color yet. There's that's a good. Oh, that. that's There's a good point. Lottery, but that's been that's been a big thing lately. Is that Nissan's been teasing different colors of cars at different venues. So we, who knows? We, we, and and it, if you're listening, I'd love to see the uh, 
oh, what's that purple called? Um, <laughs> Rosewood Metallic. Bring that Ooh, one. Rosewood. Yeah. Is that what – so when I saw that color, and I think I'm – if I'm thinking about the color that – if we're thinking about the same color – is that that's closest to like a CRP cherry red pearl? Is that like a dark red ish? It's the Interlagos Fire Brickyard that metallic. Oh, color. okay, yes, that that okay. Now I know exactly which one you're talking about. Now that would be so amazing to see that. If you're listening, <laughs> yeah, uh, g- give Brian a call, man. Let's set that up. I want to see that. Yeah. I yeah. actually might be in the area. Uh, I don't know if I told you, but I might be in the area. It's just coincidence. Uh, where I work, uh, they have me uh, at, in North Carolina sometime this year. So I'm I am trying to grease the wheels to make sure I can be out there in North Carolina uh, May eight. Huh? It, come on up. I mean, <laughs> from from, the, the, from that area, you're two and a half the hour drive up. Yeah. And if you need a ride, we can arrange that. Gotcha. We'll, 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 oh. we'll get you an Uber. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, <laughs> car <laughs> well by any means necessary if i'm in if i'm in north carolina in general i i will be at z days that that um, week we may send john boy in that big old dodge power ram Woo. but it will move beyond the speed of the speed limit so we'll, we'll, we'll be there gotcha uh I don't think we've mentioned it yet. We are six weeks away from Z Days for those who are listening. Uh, the events, uh, again, from your website, zdays.com, May 18th through the 21st. So, again, that's six about a month and a half from now. Um, man, uh, you've got – obviously, this is your home stretch as an organizer. So, I'm sure – I mean, I – I, I know you could be doing a million things preparing for the show right now. So, I appreciate – you know, we appreciate you being here with us tonight. Hey. Yeah. An evening away from it, drinking beers with my friends, yeah, promoting the events aside. But I mean, anytime <laughs> we, the three of us can drink a beer, let's do it. <laughs> nah, nah, I agree. Um, you mentioned earlier, though, if it's okay, uh, I want to talk about you mentioned a, a 350Z that you recently acquired. Mm-hmm. Let's you want to talk about that for a minute because so I mean. I, obviously, we Miles and I, we both know you. You've you, first of all, you you have a, an absolute beast of a 350Z. Uh, mm-hmm. We've mentioned it in the last episode. Right hand drive LS uh, powered 500, 600 horses. What, what's it at now? Five, yeah. a solid five. Yeah. And I know just recently we were. I was looking at your Facebook page, and now you have a second 350Z, and you've already dissected this thing you know the engines on a on a on a cart you're doing something but what, what are you doing what's I, I literally don't know I, I, I so this is michelle's track car oh so she feels a little out of her sorts in a right hand drive rumbly tumbly big cam manual brake car so i'm putting something putting her in something that's a little more Tame. I mean, it's a twin turbo built block APS Extreme twin turbo. Uh, it's a 2006 rev up. Should turn quite a few RPMs. Tame. tame. Yeah. yeah. Tame. <laughs> she's going to make more power than me, but she's going to have ABS. She's going to have traction control. Uh, I'm just going through the car, really touching it up, doing things to my standards. Yeah, uh, you know, it, I've been accused of over engineering one or two things. Mm-hmm. So she's going to have that same margin of safety in her car. So, gotcha. And and it is a uh, being left hand drive essentially U.S. spec. Is that a big? Th- was that a big? Uh, was that a big demand for for for, uh, for Michelle? For her, no, um, it, it's it so. To drive a right-hand drive car, you need to spend a lot of time in the right-hand seat. Yeah. And as much as I instruct and coach, I was already thinking in that speed, in that space. So I'm already yeah. thinking, please break. Please break. <laughs> <laughs> Gas here. you know. So I'm already thinking it. And so when I was building my car, part of it was to put the student on the native side of the car. So they didn't have to try to interpret any timing differences. Oh. And Michelle, uh, 
she's going to be in a normal twin turbo 350z car with big brakes and blah 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 blah, blah. but she's going to be in a more normal car and, and much more to her comfort level it's a good point good point if it's okay i got a few pictures here i found your facebook page i want to sh- yep. share them with you. you you've done uh, already torn this thing apart ripped the front end off i guess you, you're, you're you, like you said you're doing it to your level of of quality or expectation now I have not gotten the sawzall out yet, so it's <laughs> the sawzall, the sawzall um, angle grinder, all that. It's still full weight, but it's we're just going to refresh it, gonna address a few things. Um, I gave it a baptism in WD forty to get rid of some of the rust, and um, I expect to have it at. Zcon or at least Z Nationals with her behind the wheel. That's going to be good. That's I, I like the idea. Uh, his and hers 350Zs. Essentially, I would. That's kind of how I feel because obviously you've got your 350Z in the background. Now, now mean, you've got this one. To be fair, I mean, my lovely bride has only driven one 350Z, and that was Doug Crawford, uh, Doug Stewart's. Of Crawford Z car, nasty in a camp monster way back 2006 7. And she's never driven a 350Z. Mm. How does my bride, well, and she drove Russ's at Barbara one time and Justin's at a track event one time, but she's never had a 350Z or G35 experience of her own. Something I had a remedy. Gotta have a time, exactly. I mean, it's yeah. for, for as much time as uh, I mean, I, I mean, I know you as being a. a whenever there's a a, a track events, I mean, it, and you can make it. I know you'll be there too. So now you've got, you know, you got company. You can always. I mean, I'm obviously, uh, you know, training and, and having fun and and, and you know, a, a company, a, a couple that races together stays together. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> Again, people think I am Z days. No. Nah. So here, here's how good I married. My wife doesn't just suffer my hobbies. She jumps in with both feet and she partakes, whether it's disc golf, running marathons, racing, Z days. She puts up with my drinking solo, though. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, God, I married well. Yes, she did. Yeah. <laughs> she's an amazing person. I mean, we, we, I mean, obviously Miles and I, we, we've 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 spent time with Michelle before, and uh, man, you, you you're you're, lu- you're a lucky man. I am. I'm blessed. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I I I think that's what I have at the moment. I mean, uh, you know, uh, before we switch gears here, was was there anything? I want to give you the opportunity. Was there anything that we're missing? You know, I, I we're definitely we want to encourage Z days. I, I really wish you the best with this news with this new 350Z, by the way. But uh, open floor, man. Was there anything that that you wanted to really drive home? You know, there, there's been um, some quibbles online, and I would just like to invite the naysayers to try the new venue. That's a f- that, and if you don't like it, you don't like it, but come with an open mind, bring a 12 pack or buy one local <laughs> and, and give it on a shake. That, 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 that's, that's it. That's fair. I mean, yeah. How, how can you, how could you say something negative about something that you've never done before? Fair, yeah. That, you know? that, 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 that's my request. And, you know, we are not begging for attendance or numbers. Like I say, if Z Days goes down to three people, Michelle, I, and one other, we'll, we'll, we'll rent a, a corner at Chuck E. Cheese, and we'll, we'll have a big old time. And if it's 300 people, we'll rent the whole Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> we'll rent a whole village. And if it's 10,000 people, we'll just rent Coda. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean. We'll scale it to whatever wants to come, who whomever wants to come. Yeah. So that that I mean, and again, and and we've never been about the numbers. 
We've mm-hmm. been about the community. And the community is not about headcount. It is the people, the enthusiasts, the – oh, God. I, I could go on and on. We don't have time for this. But <laughs> the people and the quality and the love of people – that's what that's what an enthusiast is. It's not about the car. The car is the starting point. The, st- the car is the tip. Yeah. The family is everything. It, it's the it's the whole community. It's, it, I, I I I totally agree with exactly what you're saying too. I mean, and, and how you said uh, family was a key word. And I was gonna say, you know, I was gonna, for those who are listening with us, you know, people might say we're being funny when we say this but we're being serious bring the family like this is not there needs to be it needs to be clear again there is z days is an event that they can cater to everybody uh like i said maybe when the sun goes down a different story but overall this is still a family events this is you can come out uh again tons of things to do in blowing rock um so surrounding area i mean it's it's a 50 mile surrounding area of Curvy Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee roads. There's there's some touristy stuff, but there's a lot of roads that a billy goat made. I mean, the goat walked around this hill this way, and someone put asphalt on it. I mean, some of these roads are the best piece of asphalt you've never had. <laughs> the best piece of what? <laughs> asphalt. Yeah. I, I like that. Everybody wants to clean the 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 tail. Mm-hmm. Well, try these. Come, try come, these. Come spend a weekend, a long weekend on these, and see what you give me the delta. Yeah. As an engineer, give me the plus minus. Yeah. It, uh, you know, you, you can't compare anything if you you know you gotta have you gotta you gotta try both. I mean, how can you have an opinion if you haven't tried both? You know. If you haven't kissed oh. two girls, you don't know the difference. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, if if it's all right with you, Brian, I you're a 350Z guy, a 350Z guy. Mm-hmm. I I am a 350Z owner. Um, while I have you on the show, I, I have a question with my about my personal 350Z. Okay. Uh, my original when I the the moment when I bought this car, I knew that I think my ultimate goal with this car was to make it a track car. Uh, eventually I would get another daily driver eventually. And then this car, this 350Z would be my weekend, my weekend car, um, for autocross, for track days, etc. I'm getting close to that point now to where it's, it's time to flip that switch. If I'm going to do it, that I'm going to flip that switch and make this uh, a track car. Uh, some, I would say by the end of this year, yeah. uh, the car itself right now is a, I, I mean, I might be exaggerating, maybe, uh, but I, I mean, the car's a little tired. It's about a hundred ninety thousand miles, high miles, but uh, exactly because I know that the VQs, aside from the oil issue, they can really take a beating. It, it, and that's why I was kind of reluctant to say that. But uh, it's a two thousand six three fifty Z, hundred ninety thousand miles. The currently stock suspension. That's probably not the good thing, but everything else, oh, engine wise, essentially has every bolt on except for headers. Uh, so it, it is a fun car, even for me as a daily driver. I enjoy the car. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna win any awards uh, for the fastest car in the world, but it is a very enjoyable car. I, I've I've driven it for five years now, so it's a very predictable car to me. I I kind of I know what's what it's gonna do. Um, so really, I have the option. I mean. I can either continue and invest a I'm pretty much going to invest exactly what it's worth to really get a car that I think is is worthy of a track day uh, mm-hmm. when it comes safety wise, suspension wise, you know, etc. Um the other option is I could just sell this car, maybe get a 370 or just a similar other car uh might cost a little bit more but but it's just a, a different canvas to really work sure. with. So Really, it's just I wanted to get your opinion. I mean, uh, if you if you were me, what what kind of direction would you go, and and you have any particular reason why? 
So uh, I'm the oddball. I love to rev up minus the oil consumption. <laughs> so uh, I love yeah. the idea of more RPMs. Uh, they did a lot of good things on that engine. Uh, the chassis or suspension is very similar to all years. But if you want to turn to a track car, there's a couple cheap, easy things to get it there. So okay. your lower traverse link, that lower control arm, yeah, has got rubber bushings. Okay. And those tend to fail as you start adding grippier and grippier tires. And they don't fail catastrophically. They, they're they still retained. So SPL makes a press-in monoball bushing or a monoball, monoball, the, okay. the term. We're about the same price as stock Traverse links. So you press out the old. Uh, it's like 400 bucks for the whole. No, 129, 129, 260 plus tax plus shipping. Woo. So you press out the stock bushings, you press in these monoballs, and that immediately gets rid of all that crazy toe walk in a hard braking situation, like in turn one of VIR, because <laughs> you don't have those bushings just doing that yeah and, and they're i mean they're not prone to fail but age exceeding their expectations of durometer versus tire grip that is a cheap relatively easy fix to do to a a, a, a team a stage one track car okay after that put some brake lines and some brake pads on it and drive it and pads okay I mean, yeah. whether it's G-Lock, Carbotech, pad, I mean, brake pads of your flavor. Okay. Some stainless steel brake lines. Put some monoballs in your lower traverse links and drive it until something fails and buy the next best part to fix that. Yeah. Because yeah. that is the life of a track car. Yeah. So those are the first things that will wear, especially on the age of your car, if they've not been replaced. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know... Uh, suspension wise, I have replaced the lower control arm bushings, which are notorious with the 350Z. Every those, but the, these tra you said Travers links are are would be the next thing to really transform the car for like for for track duty. Just the stability under braking is uh, just the confidence because you don't have the steering wheel walking on you uh, because all, as those bushings rock in their socket, yeah, the front tires are just. Mm, I and I know what you mean. I, I've I've felt that. Yeah. I've, I've when I've had to make sudden stops. I I, I feel that even now mm -hmm. uh, on the road. So, yeah. I mean, it, it will add a tad bit of noise. I mean, just the the, the nature of a monoball. It's a track car at this point. Yeah. I, I, once I flip that switch, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, I'm not going to worry about anymore. <laughs> it goes in a daily driver, honestly. Yeah. Because if you're in a panic stop on the interstate or somewhere else, yeah, the last thing you do is you're still doing this. It, it, it just gets rid of all that crabby toe walk under hard braking. Okay. Under That's hard just braking. my opinion. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but... No, I, I like it. I, I mean, I work on once a day. I got that out of the way. No, work, that, that, that's my statement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Those crabby uh, traverse link bushings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I've I've got the stainless steel brake lines so far. I do have base brakes. This was a base car. It was. I've upgraded to an LSD differential and whatnot. But I'm assuming. Would you recommend the Brembos? I, I assume that's probably the better option. Well, or for an 06, you've already got the upgraded brakes. There's an upgraded base brake. Yes, you're yes, right. So you're already. Your diameter is, I think, a quarter of an inch difference from the Brembo package. Oh. So your, your 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 rotor mass and heat capacity is just a fraction off of the Brembos. Okay. You won't have the issues of pad knockback with a fixed caliper. You've got a floating caliper still. Okay. So oh. Honestly, until you decide to really upgrade upgrade brakes. Okay. I would stay with those 06 base brakes because they. They made them bigger in the front. They really made them bigger in the rear. Yeah. 
And it's it's not quite rainbow, but it's you've already got it. So just just put some good rotors. Uh, I recommend something with some high nickel content, some good racing compound brakes, and rock them until you just simply run out of braking potential. Right. Don't uh, br- fix it. And uh, what do you say? Uh, Ride it until it breaks. Ride it until it breaks. Yes. Why try to upgrade some that it's it's enough to get. And the main purpose of all of this is just seat time. You got to just get some seat time, figure myself out as a driver, and, and just have some fun with it. Yeah. Don't fix the dog if the dog ain't broke. <laughs> Good point. I mean, you'll be surprised how far you'll get with those 06 plus breaks. Again, uh, most of your pad manufacturers will carry uh, that fitment. Mm-hmm. Rotors, I, I would get a good gray cast. We can talk offline on what my recommendation is, but a Centric uh, Z1, they, they, they all have a good gray cast rotor. Yep. Uh, run them until when you go into turn one somewhere and your eyes are this big. <laughs> And you're not slowing down as you want to. You've probably run out of brakes, or you're over optimistic of what you expect of your brakes. Okay. Okay. But, uh, you've got the very good uh, seven eighths of a Brembo kit. That's no sense in spending money until you run out of brakes or how to use them. That's a good pay. That's a good way of putting it too. I mean. Seven eighths, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a very competent brake system. It, it is a confident brake system. I mean, okay. that that's what I tell people in the O three to O five cars mm-hmm. to buy on my three fifty Z or wherever as takeoffs for the first couple of years okay. until they really decide if this is their cup of tea. They want to put money in it. They, they want to advance their motorsport career. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where I tell people to start, and you've got it already. Interesting. Okay. That that makes a lot of sense. I honestly, I mean, it sounds like I won't. It seems like I, it sounds like I've got a lot. Of, as long as the, the car is in good working order, which it seems to be, I'll I should have a good a good uh, canvas to to really start. Well, uh, it's a, a few track days. It's it's a rev up, so it's a two stroke. It's drinking oil, but oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. I mean, yeah, I, I'll uh, like I said, keep a few uh, keep a few gallons of oil in in the truck uh, mm-hmm. and, and check it often. But just tell Grid every time you go out, this is a two stroke. Expect some oil, <laughs> and we'll be fine. I like it. I, I can do that. I can do that. Uh, one last thing. Uh, this is just a bonus question. Now, uh, again, this is more of a daydream. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm doing it though. But if, in your opinion, in your experience, uh, supercharged. If I if I were to go forced induction, mm-hmm. would a supercharger be the flavor you'd pick, or like a single turbo? Uh, I, and I say single turbo. I, I think I think I would. If I did go turbocharge, I would probably keep it a single. Uh, any any favoritism over one of one over the over the other? Absolutely. How do you want to use it? You want to use road course, autocross, uh, drag racing. What's uh, your favorite? It's gonna be track. It, it would be track. Uh, we've got some small road road courses out here. Okay. I, I I like single turbo. Uh, I like it um, for a lot of reasons. Mostly because you don't have all those turbine housings so close to the block, coking up the water, coking up the oil. You get that turbo away. And, and the great thing about road racing is if you're ever below four grand, you're probably in the wrong gear. That's an operator error you can fix. Yeah. So the little bit of lag you may have, you'll give up, you'll, you'll improve on having a colder charge by having a slightly bigger turbo. Okay. I like that. Yeah, that's the thing too. I mean, I've seen some kits that are fairly affordable. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, there are so many manufacturers out there right now, so it really is a pick of the litter. The VQ mm-hmm. obviously is a huge, uh, huge aftermarket support for it too. So mm-hmm. uh, good good point. I, 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 
I was just curious. I mean, because I mean, obviously, I know you to be a big uh, track person. Uh, you've you've seen a lot of you've seen a lot of things, man. So I I know you'd be the guy to ask. A a a, a well sized single turbo away from the engine. Uh, there's a booster performance kit puts it down by the transmission. Uh, there's a couple that puts it up towards the left hand uh, headlight. Mm-hmm. There's several good options for a single turbo. Pick your flavor. Pick your gotcha. flavor. It's back in 2005. You could buy a bad turbo kit. It's hard to buy a bad turbo kit in 2022. <laughs> That's a good point. We've come a long way. There's been yeah. plenty of time for a lot of these uh, uh, g- good, simple fixes or whatever the case may be. It evolves. Yeah. All right, all right. I appreciate you letting me know this stuff here, man. I just, this is a good one. It's a good one. Hit Miles, what's that? Hit me up anytime. All right. I appreciate that. Miles, you got any technical questions? Are you good? No, I'm Have good, heard? <laughs> I don't know anything about a 620, Miles. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad. I, see <laughs> I do have a 620 tailgate. I see that. Oh, I saw That's that. right. That's a cool looking, yeah. It's it's one of those things where you it's like a uh you know a squirrel moment you know and, uh, you see yep. something yeah that's that's the tailgate above your head there yeah. <laughs> all right awesome well um yeah let, let's finish out uh the the debt we're getting a little long in the tooth we're we're turning in a Lord of the Rings movie so <laughs> um. Yeah, no, no, it's cool. And it goes on forever. Yeah, that's it's the parking lot lifestyle. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's everything that I have here. Uh, thanks for everybody that stayed on with us. And, uh, you know, obviously thanks to Brian for coming out and talking about the event. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I want to thank everybody for being on with us here tonight. And um, uh, I think that's everything that I've got here tonight. Mike, to anything else that we need to do, I just remind everybody to like, uh, share, and subscribe. Of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, for those who are listening, uh, we of course, we are on Facebook. We are also on Instagram. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, and also on every major podcast network, audio network, you can listen to the Nissan Nerd Podcast. So we have, at this point, well over 20, uh, close to 25 episodes. Ever, we've been doing – we've been – airing these episodes for over a year now so uh you can always go back take a look um have some fun see how we've evolved as a as a podcast (laughs) we've come a long way again miles thank you this is two years this is our first show after two years it's a it's a milestone we're we're only getting better uh thank thank you brian as well uh we um we were doing good. So if you did like this episode, tell your friends about it. Like you said, Miles, like, share, subscribe. Uh, we do have an email, info at nissannerd.com. You can find us directly, of course, uh, in, in addition to the Facebook inbox or the DMs. Uh, we have all that, so we can we can do that for you. Also, yeah, these lovely gentlemen have decided to be a partner with Z-Days, so you can find them on zdays.com slash partners. Yes, you can. Thank You're you, up- gentlemen, for coming on. <laughs> oh, and it yeah, out. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> the price it's, of koozies. It's, a, it's our it's our <laughs> pleasure. It's our pleasure, Brian. And I we no, we uh, Thank yeah, you. we're yeah. we would have done it anyway, man. Don't even worry about it. It's like you've you've shown us a good time. It's the least we can do is keep everybody's beers cold. So it's the least yeah. we can do. <laughs> I can do uh, that. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, uh. I think that's all we have, Miles. Honestly, I mean, of course, we want to thank yeah. you, Brian. This has been great. Uh, of course, you're always invited. I mean, we need a, we need a. You, you'll be our our third timer as well. You know, to to, to set the record on that one too. And uh, if any, if anybody's got anything else in front of you, we can do a final con by here for the night. Uh, there you go. There you go. Again, for those who are with us online, uh, let's go ahead and say con by. Thank you for being with us. Uh, and, and and there we go, guys. Guys, can't buy, can't buy. Wow, wow. 
uh, as as we as we wrap up here too, man. Uh, let me let you know we had a ton of comments. You guys that are online with the comments, they were amazing. I'm sorry we didn't get a t- chance to look at all of them, but uh, we did get a few popular ones here. Jeremy Stillwell's been hitting us pretty hard. Brian yeah, passed uh, popped yeah. Miles Cherry there, of course, saying great great job. Uh, Ion Trevor, I want to say thank you to you guys as well. Uh, thanks for being with us. Oh, Miles. You okay I'm back there? The, I'm going to the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> Your green screen's a little faded, but yes, there you go. Now we see it. Yeah, that's <laughs> All right, here we go. We did get a lot of love online, though. So, again, thanks also to Lisa saying, family, I'm a, a proud to be a part of. She's referring to the Z Days family, Brian. So, you did have a lot of fans awesome. with us. She, she makes awesome memes, by the way. She's a great, great person to be around. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, uh, much love to everybody. Uh, we'll be here again. Uh, the next episode will probably be in two weeks here, as per usual. So thanks for being with us. If you like what you saw, come on, come again and see us. Uh, like, and, like our pages. We'll definitely give you a notification when that next show comes around. So uh, <laughs> we'll... We'll wrap up then here, guys. See you again. Woo! Bye, y'all.